podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Saturday, March 19th, 2022. This is episode 1877. Enjoy. No ads, just the content. That's what you get when you join Club Twit. You even get extras like Twit Plus, our new bonus feed just for members, and exclusive access to the Club Twit Discord community. Join now for just $7 a month and support Twit as we continue to create top-notch podcasts you expect and deserve. We're just getting started, so be one of the first to join as we build Club Twit from the ground up. You could be an early member. Go to twit.tv slash club twit to learn more and sign up now. Thanks. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy, along with Micah Sargent. He's the tech guy, too. <laughs> hello. Hello. Uh, today, we are uh, going to be talking a little bit about, uh, if you don't like Apple, <laughs> you maybe you shouldn't listen, because uh, yesterday, we both got some Apple stuff. Apple stuff. It came in, finally. <sighs> I guess it was launch day, so, of yeah. course, it came in on time. This is uh, the show where we talk about Apple stuff and other <laughs> stuff, too. No. Everything with a chip in it. 8888 Ask Leo is the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Outside that area, you can still reach us, but you have to use Skype or something like that. Some internet doohickey to, uh, to get a hold of us. 8888 Ask Leo. Should be toll free no matter how you call because I don't know why. Some For some reason... It's supposed to be toll-free. Uh, website, techguylabs.com. That's where you can get everything we talk about. We'll put links up there. There's a transcript of the show. There's even audio and video from the show after the fact at techguylabs.com. And that's free. There's no sign-up, no charge. Please use it s liberally. There <laughs> costs us very little for you to visit. Techguylabs.com. Uh, so, um, I, you know, actually we're not going to spend the whole show obviously talking about this stuff, but I think there's some interesting things to say about the new Apple gear. Uh, yesterday, uh, you got the Mac studio display, which is the new Apple monitor. First low end monitor they've made in years, not low end, it's $1,500. It's not that low end. Uh, but first less than $6,000 monitor they've made in years. Uh, and then uh, I got the Mac Studio, and I don't know why, but I guess because I was buying it for my lovely wife, I, I maxed it sort of. So it's the M1 Ultra, the high-end chip. We some, we needed to see that and play with it. Uh, it's heavy. <laughs> it was very heavy. It's got a copper coolant system inside of it. It's fat. It's uh, Yeah, it's a lot bigger than I think I was even expecting. We, we lifted up the box and thought, oh my goodness, this is, uh, this is a lot to work with here. It's not the Mac Mini we were thinking, like a, a new Mac Mini or high-end Mac Mini or even a Mac Mini Pro. It isn't. It's the same footprint as a Mac Mini, but it's more than twice as tall. And it's a lot more powerful than even the M1 Mini. Well, now that's an interesting point. Right, because it depends on how you look at it. And how you use it. Yes, so really important, and this is this. You know, when I plugged it in at home, got it all set up, said Lisa, sit down. She said, "This is great. It's just like my laptop." <laughs> <laughs> and you said, "Oh, well, it is, right?" Because what makes the new M1 Pro, M1 Max, and M1 Ultra so ultra is their multi-core performance. So uh, all computers run uh, two kinds of processors, well, many kinds of processors, but two primary kinds of processors, the CPU, central processing unit, and the GPU, the graphics processing unit. And uh, when in, this actually kind of started with Intel back in the day, when they realized they couldn't make the CPU any faster because of heat problems, uh, you get many more errors uh, it just becomes problematic if you go faster than about 4 gigahertz, 4 billion cycles per second. It just it doesn't work very well. They tried it with a chip they called the Itanium, and it was, a, it was way too hot. It was kind of a flop. So Intel said, well, hmm, scratching their head. We, now we got a problem because Moore's Law, we got to double the capabilities every 18 months. We, we've got to do something. Oh, hey, you know how we could double it? We could put two of them in. Technically mm -hmm. doubling it. That was the Core 2 duo. Uh, technically doubling it because you have two chips. But there's reasons why that doesn't necessarily make uh, a difference in performance. For one thing, 
it only benefits a program that uses or can use the two chips simultaneously. So that, and that's, by the way, not your operating system. That's not your word processor. That's not your browser. It's, not, it's almost nothing you would do normally uses more than one processor at a time. Mm -hmm. So there really wasn't much gain to be had from dual core, quad core. There's, there's even many more cores. It uses a lot more uh, power and a lot more heat. Apple has come up with their no own chips, which are much lower power, much less hot. And uh, they are doing now with the M1 Pro and the... Actually, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max are single core. But this Ultra, the one we just got with the studio, is the first dual core where it has two systems on a chip uh, linked together with a very, very fast 7.5 terabyte interconnect, which means they can talk to each other almost instantaneously, which is better than Intel, frankly. But still, it's two chips. And unless the thing you want to do requires or is capable of splitting the job up into two different tasks, there's not a lot of benefit to that. So my wife really wasn't wrong when she said that this M1 Ultra, $4,999 computer, wasn't any faster than her M1, 19, actually $1,000 M1 MacBook Air, because they're running at the same clock speed. If it's a single process that doesn't use multiple cores, you're not going to see the benefit. Ah, Leo, you say, in your mind, or out loud if you're alone, what about the GPU? Well, it's the same thing. They have a GPU. Uh, it's got multiple cores, many cores. I mean, <laughs> with the M1 Ultra, I think you've got something like 20 CPU cores or threads. You've got two chips, but you've got 20 cores. And uh, the processor is up to 32 cores, I think. So, But is it 32 times faster? No. Right. Only <laughs> if you're running 32 things at once, which most people don't ever do. So, it's really uh, an important lesson. How much RAM you get is good, and by doubling the chips, Apple doubles the RAM capability, so they now can go up to 128 gigs. They were stuck at 16 with the original M1, so that's good. Uh, they have more Thunderbolt ports, because again, that was limited by the number of Thunderbolt ports provided by the single core. So they can do more, and it, it will be faster if you need a lot of memory. Graphics processors have access to all that memory, so they'll be faster. But the core itself is running at the same clock speed on all the chips, all the M1s from the very first uh, Mac Mini or the M1 uh, MacBook Air to the most recent Mac, Mac Studio Ultra Max Super Duper High End. You can actually get up to about $7,000 if you max it out. So the only people who should buy that, by the way, people who know they're going to be using stuff that uses multiple cores, that's who you, you would know if you needed it. I think that's that's a perfect way to put it. Yes, you would know if this is something that you need. Otherwise, you would be so happy with a machine that is far less costly than this. Yeah. So that's a really. I think that's uh, maybe not said enough. Really, uh, but what what is cool is what Apple's doing with these processors is really amazing. Not necessarily faster than Intel. Let's point that out. Intel and AMD do have chips that are faster, but at what price? At about four or five times more wattage, a lot more heat as a result of bigger things. You know, this M Mac Studio, for as fat as it is, almost all of it is the power supply and the fan mm -hmm. zzz, or thrusters or whatever they call them. Uh, the, the computer itself is really just a little thin board, not much bigger than a couple of iPhones uh, side by side. That's it. So, but And they do need cooling because they're going to be running as fast as their little feet can run. But I have to say... Uh, trying as hard as I could to max it out. This Ultra never got hot. Uh, the fan never got loud. It was going the whole time. Now, the interesting thing, your display has a fan in it, too. Yeah, well, there was some some cooling, cooling feels up at the top of it where the vents were, which was interesting. This uh, is a 27-inch monitor they call it the studio display. 1500 bucks. Actually, you could spend more if you uh, want to get a pivoting arm. <laughs> and a nano texture uh, <laughs> glass fancy and all glass. that kind of stuff. It's a nice monitor. It's not a great monitor. It doesn't have HDR. It's only 600 nits of brightness, which isn't... There are brighter monitors out there. There are better monitors out there for a lot less. Uh, LG's ultra-fine display, which Apple was selling their 5K monitor, is 200 300 bucks less. Mm -hmm. 
But what's interesting about this, we seem, it seems to be this has an iPhone built in. Yeah, that's kind of what it boils down to. So uh, <laughs> That's really weird. In fact, there was uh, Scooter X has shared the quote a few times. Uh, During Fireballs, John Gruber went into the system information menu, graphics slash displays, and discovered that the studio display is running software version 15.4 with a build number. And that build number happens to be the same number that's associated with iOS 15.4. It's the latest iOS. Yep. Not, not even an old one. It's the brand new one. An in iPhone fact, 11 running iOS 15.4. Some people did report. I don't know if you, uh, when you connected it, if you did you have a, a software update on your monitor? No, not right away. Jason Snell, a good friend of ours, his crashed. Yes, it did. It did. Now, it's uh, this was always a puzzle when Apple said, yeah, we're going to put the uh, A11 Bionic in it, which is the same chip as the iPhone uh, 11 or A13. A13, yeah. Sorry. It's in the iPhone 11. Uh, like, why? <laughs> For what? And it does have, you know, some features uh, like, hey, you know who, except that you still need a computer for you know who to talk back. It does have uh, surround sound coming out of its, uh, were the speakers good? Did you like them? Spatial audio, yeah. And the speakers were better than what I was using before. So absolutely, okay. yeah. So that's good. And it, uh, it has a, a webcam built into it, which does center stage, which is Apple's technology for following you around like the Mona Lisa, <laughs> just staring at you. Um However, yes. the camera, reportedly, not very good. What, what In fact, one person asked me if I needed to clean off my webcam. It was that smushy? It was, it was just like a little bit of Vaseline. Got, like it's got, got fingerprints on, on it? Yeah. yeah. And that's what uh, Wall Street Journal's reporting, uh, The Verge, Neelai Patel, uh, the aforementioned John Gruber from Daring Fireball, all are saying this camera's terrible. Mm -hmm. Apple said, yeah, sorry. Oh, whoops. I don't know how this happens. Whoops. Oh, yeah, we blew it. Uh, we're going to ship out at some point. We don't know when. You didn't get a fix yet. Nope, no fix yet. We're going to ship out an update, a software update that'll make it better. Maybe that's why you put in an iPhone in there. It's because then you can ship software updates make to a monitor. Make as you want to. Yeah. I just don't, I don't know if I like the idea of a display crashing on me. I don't like that at all. This doesn't do that. I'm, no I'm, display I'm I've ever listening. had crashes. Yeah, exactly. Your TV does because it's a computer. Uh, yeah, that's true. But most monitors... Just, you know, passive little things. Anyway, uh, I canceled, believe it or not, you after did. reading these reviews, I canceled my Mac Studio Display order because I just, I'm using a $600 LG 4K HDR display that looks fantastic on that Mac Studio. That's fine. I have a better camera. I got the Logitech Brio for my, this is all for my wife because mm -hmm. I would never get this for myself. Uh, the Logitech Brio camera, um, she, you know, it's it's working quite well. She doesn't need uh, the studio display. This, the Mac Studio itself is great. I, You know, fine. But don't go crazy. You don't have to buy it. You can just exactly. get... Even the MacBook Air is, is fast for 99% of what normal people do. Unless you're a photographer. More importantly, like a video editor. You're doing 3D modeling. Something fancy like that. You really, you really don't need to spend more money. And that's the... And that's the way it is. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. I am uh, I am anxious to take phone calls about anything but Apple today. <laughs> no, you can call about Apple, too. 888-827-5536. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent. We will talk tech next. Kim Schaffer, the unbreakable phone angel. She's a fine person who will answer your phones. You like stripes. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> there have been a lot of stripes lately, haven't there? Yeah. You like them. No, I like stripes too. You know, I think better than animal prints. I think when somebody, when a woman gets to the age that I am now, they tend to then, be, then, they you tend know, to be an is animal that, print. Are, is that a cougar print that you're wearing? <laughs> is that what that is? Are you, but uh, stripes, yeah, stripes are good. Better than polka dots. Yeah. Polka dots make, would make, you know, make people look like circus tents. That's not a good look. <laughs> I guess this could no too. stripes are good. I like them. <laughs> this makes me look like um, what are the tents they put on your house when you're having pests? Yeah, are you having your termites? <laughs> termites. Are you having termite your termites tent. removed? I look like a termite. <laughs> no, tent. you don't. No, you look great. Who should I uh, start the show with? Who should oh, we? Oh, let's the show go with? to um. So you guys were just talking about the new Mac Mini, weren't you? Yes, we were. So let's go to Adam, who needs help um, configuring his online, too. There's nice. two Adams on the line, so just make sure you choose the Adam right in one. Putnam Valley, that Adam? <laughs> that one. All right. Thank you, Kim. Hello, Adam in Putnam Valley, New York. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys for hey, the Leo. day. Hey, Leo. Hey, Micah. Hello. Hey, Leo. Hi, Micah. How you doing? Great. Welcome. Good. good. 
Thank you. So uh, just so you know, last time I spoke to you was 2013. You helped me pick out a computer for my son who had graduated college. Thank you. For How's that. he doing? Nine years later. He's doing good. He's a mechanical engineer. Nice. Um, yeah, top of his company, and he's doing a small company, but he's head of the company. Awesome. And he's doing really well. Thank you. And by now, he has a new sweater. A new sweater. He has a new computer. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was still thinking about Kim. A sweater and computer. <laughs> yeah, he kept rebuilding. He building out the one that we re you recommended. Oh, good. He kept building it out, swapping it, and nice. He finally bought a new one and built his own. So nice. Yeah, but thank you. So what can we do for you, Adam? Yeah, so I have a 27-inch um, iMac uh, 2013, and I believe it's on its last breath. It is. Um, it's, giving me the, it's giving me the beach ball more and more. Yeah, the one I replaced for Lisa with the Mac Studio was, in fact, a 2014 iMac. And and really, my rule of thumb was I couldn't get it to Monterey. It was, it was too old to upgrade to the latest Mac OS operating system, and that was... The, that was it. And she was also, yeah, more beach balling, more more weird behavior. Yeah, you yeah. know, I think it's time. Yeah. So I I bought the Mac Mini, the M1. Perfect. I bought it with only two, I bought it with 256 gig, the basic model. Um, I bought it with a, a eight of memory. Um, here's the thing. I'm getting an external hard drive, the Samsung uh, T5. Very nice. Recommended to me. Yep. I'm going to use that. Now, here's a question. Here it is. Uh, do I put the apps on the uh, Mac Mini's hard drive and all the rest of the data on the external? Or do you put the whole thing on the external? Or I would, I would uh, at least have the operating system on the internal. That's the fastest drive you've got. Of course, you've got Thunderbolt. Um, although that right. Samsung, I think, is just USB 3. Am I right? Or is it Thunderbolt? No, I think it's USB 3. Yeah, it's 3. USB 3, 3, 3. So that's, I think, 10 gigabytes bytes per second so it's pretty fast but you wouldn't want to boot off of it um apps you don't have a huge amount of choice with mac os they re it really wants to put them in the applications folder as long as you have enough and i think you do with 256 gigs uh unless you have a million apps i would put the apps and this is almost always the case with any external drive and any operating system operating system apps anything you install stays on the internal fast drive and then it's very easy in the Mac to make your data drive, your home dip drive, be anywhere, including that external disk. So the way you do that is you go into the user's settings, and it's an advanced setting. So you'll have to unlock it, you know, give, it, give yourself administrator permissions. And then in the advanced, uh, if you, uh, I think, right-click on your, uh, or control, command-click on your name, there'll be advanced properties. And that's where you can actually say where your uh, where your home drive lives. So okay. you can then point it to the external drive. You're going to do it in a weird way because you're going to it's not just a name. Uh, you have to find the actual name. but uh, what, the, once you do it, it can be anywhere and that's really the easiest way to do it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So you're going to go in. So I don't know if I, I'm showing it, but I'm showing it a little later. So here I am in my users and groups, and I'm going to right-click or command-click on my name, advanced options. Okay. And then it says home directory. And you just, actually, you know what? You don't have to worry about it. You just choose it. So as long as that Samsung is attached, this will show up, and you can make the home directory be anywhere. That's really, it's nice because Apple makes it very easy. What you might want to do, uh, when you first set it up, mm -hmm. it's going to set up the home directory on the internal disk. What you might then do is copy that directory to the external directory so that everything's in the internal directory is on the external drive, and then choose okay. it. And then that way, nothing weird will be, you won't be missing anything. Right. Okay. Copy right. it, if you can, with something like Super Duper. That will copy. Yeah, copy it with SuperDuper so that you have all the hidden files and all that stuff as well. Okay, I already back up to SuperDuper and I back up to Time Machine. Good man, good man. Okay, Be careful, Time Machine. Yeah. If you don't give it an external drive, will back it up to the internal drive, which is very scant. You don't yeah. have a lot of room, so you don't want to back it up to the internal drive. You want to make sure you're backing it up. I think 256 is fine. I have 512 on my uh, uh -huh. laptop. My new MacBook Pro 14-inch M1 
Pro laptop, and uh, I don't even use 256 of it. If you're if you're okay. prudent, you'll easily fit all the apps. And that's for data as well as apps. So it's not a big deal. You should be able to fit it all in there. You don't have a well, huge have, number uh, of apps, have, right? Right. I have total storage. of. Um, I'm using 500 out of a terabyte, 500 gigabytes of a terabyte. So I bought a two terabyte drive. The Samsung, perfect. So. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Now I have another question. You sure. Now raised another question, and I'm hearing all these problems about the display, studio display. I also purchased the studio display. It did not ship yet. I'm still waiting for it. But now I'm hearing these problems, and now I'm nervous. Um, I, I, I was nervous to buy it because of the expense of it, and now I'm nervous about the problems they're having. Well, you're replacing um, an iMac. So really the whole point of the studio display from Apple's point of view is you buy that, and that Mac Mini you bought or the new Mac Studio, you're making an iMac. But they're just that's separate components. And so it has, that's why it has the speakers, the camera, and the microphone array. It's all the features that were in your iMac. If you decide not to buy it and buy a regular, you can buy a less expensive monitor, which is nice because you can get all kinds of configurations. But you'll still have to buy speakers and a camera uh, and, and a mic if the camera doesn't have a good mic. The Brio, one of the reasons I bought the Brio, which was 200 bucks, is it's a very, very, very good camera with very, very good mics. It's good array mics. So in that case, all I had to add to Lisa's monitor was some decent speakers. Right. So, right. you know, Mike is right. keeping his, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Because it, it's exactly what I wanted, which was an all-in-one solution with the speakers and all of that kind of stuff. And, I mean, I already knew I was going to have to use, I was pretty certain I was going to have to use an external webcam for the stuff that I do because it does require a better uh, camera than you're going to get from any monitor that has a built-in webcam. Right, right. Well, and, and that's just it. I love my iMac display. I get so many compliments from it. And it's 2013, and it still looks amazing. Um, yeah, I'm so sitting in front of a two, uh, the a 5K. It's a great, it's a great yeah. display. Yeah, um, I have to replace okay. this too, though, because I can't get to Monterey, and that's kind of a kind of a yeah. problem. Somebody yeah. is saying, and it's a yeah. good point. Alberta Guru is saying, if you move your home folder to the external drive, if for any reason that external drive is connected, the Mac is going to barf when you boot. So it might be better to keep the home drive where it is and just put your documents and your other stuff. You could put those anywhere you want and put those on the external drive and then keep a small home drive internally. That's probably, he's right, that's probably the most reliable way to operate. Okay, okay. Um, will I be able to do that? from the setup stand yeah. because I don't have enough room to put it all on the, and then drag it. I don't have the room to do that. Ah, uh, well, don't, in that case, gigabytes. I got to run because I got to, we got to get ready for uh, Scott. Go but um, I would say in that case, um, cop, don't do the set up your Mac thing. Copy it over to the external drive. Go from there. It's time to get hip. Look at this guy. He's getting hipper and hipper. Scott Wilkinson, home <laughs> theater guru. I like your uh, quilt behind you now. That looks good. Oh, thank you. My grandma made that. Oh, Yeah, I, I thought I recognized a nice granny granny square. <laughs> it's a class. Oh, it is? That's a granny square, isn't it? Yeah, Lots of different yeah. yeah. It's actually, I think it's crochet. It's yep. not a quilt. It's uh, Yep, crocheted granny squares, and then you combine them together to make a blanket out of it. Micah knows right. all about this. I am a Don't ask <laughs> share. Don't ask why. He's <laughs> under 30, but he's a grandma. I indeed. <laughs> Just call me Granny Micah. Yep. Just cram Granny Micah. All right. <laughs> Scott joins us every week to talk about home theater, big screen TVs, surround sound. He writes at techhive.com. What's the latest... Well, I'm, I've been getting a number of listener uh, questions by email, which is great. Good. And, and uh, those who uh, want to write to me, please do. It's scott at twit.tv. Very easy. And uh, I will answer as best I can. Twit.tv, I should explain because people are going, why is that so easy? Oh, oh, oh. Twit is our <laughs> – it's not that easy. <laughs> Twit is our podcast network, <laughs> This Week in Tech. And its website is twit.tv, and we get email at twit.tv. So, yes, you can write to Scott at twit.tv. Exactly. Yes, twit.tv. Mm -hmm. So the perennial question, of course, is what TV should I get? Yes. <laughs> yes. Has that changed much in the last few years? No. The, the, I mean, in terms of the question, no. But everybody no, in terms of the what? answer, I don't get it. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, people have been asking that question since I Love Lucy. But that's right. The answer that's right. has changed since then. Has it, it changed has. in the last few years? Is a question. Yes, I would say so. Uh, TVs have have gotten better and cheaper by a long shot. Yeah, that's and, nice, isn't it? Which is really nice. Yeah. So James E asks, um, "What's the best TV under a thousand dollars? Fifty inches or more?" Now, a thousand dollars. You know, I mean, <laughs> do you remember the old plasma, the the original forty two inch Fujitsu plasma TV? Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. I don't even remember it. We bought some. <laughs> a tech TV. I didn't pay it. Yeah, yeah. Paul yeah, Allen, exactly. the Microsoft billionaire, paid it, so he could afford it. He could afford it. That's Those right. things got burned in like in five minutes. By the way, oh, they were man. terrible. Oh man, <laughs> I felt no, so bad. Kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, these days you can get a really good TV, a lot larger than that forty-two oh, yeah. incher, for a tenth the cost, a thousand bucks. Who did now, I just I, see that's selling? Like, I think that the QD OLEDs, Samsung's prices on the QD OLEDs are very good. Did you uh, notice you know that? What? I haven't noticed that. No, I have to go look that up. The QD OLED, which is their brand new quantum dot oled which they announced at ces this year for the first time but not with prices uh, at the time no no and i haven't actually seen the prices you have i have to go look so those up. they have a low end and a high end of course but the low end uh say a 55 inch is 1500 bucks i mean it's still a little bit above our our viewers our, our target. target yeah exactly but still 1500 bucks for qd for oled inch? yeah yeah Wow. Well, that's not bad. I was going to tell James, I and I told him in, e in the email that if you can stretch a little bit to $1,300, the LG 55-inch C1 OLED would be my strong recommendation. The C1 LG. I have an older LG. You have an older I LG. I love it. It is aged beautifully. It still looks mm -hmm. gorgeous. Still and that's looks great. probably seven years old now. Yeah, I yeah. remember calibrating it way I back know. when. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, thirteen hundred bucks for the C one fifty five inch C one OLED. Strong recommendation. Now, if you have to stay under a thousand dollars, then there are, are several choices, and the two companies that I recommend looking at are TCL and Hisense, both of which are Chinese companies, huge Chinese companies. Um, and they're both, TCL has made inroads into the U.S. market for quite a few years now. Hisense is starting to more and more. And uh, we've got uh, two that I would recommend from TCL, both 55 inches. The R635 is a Roku-based TV for 950 bucks, And the R646, which is a Google TV-based smart TV, is 750 now, I have no idea why there's a $200 difference between these two TVs. My, my guess is that Roku costs more to license. They must be, yeah. They, it must be. That and must they be may what need a is. better processor. You know, I mean, yeah. if you really want it to be a Roku, it should have a better processor than most smart TVs come with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Now, as you and I have always said, uh, get an external box to do your smart TV functions. It, it's going to work better. It's going to be more upgradable. It's not Although, very expensive. If it's a Roku inside, that might be the exception to that. I mean, I still. Mm, I agree. Yeah. yeah. It's and better I than that. I prefer the Roku. Yeah. The, the, the software that the companies write, Samsung, Sony, mm -hmm. LG, is terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. So it's yeah. better to exactly. use the Roku software. And if it's right. internal, as long as they give enough processing. Yeah. 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 That, and that, you're right. That may very well be. Well, there are two high senses I wanted to quickly recommend as well. The 55-inch U8G, which is 750. These are both Android TV, smart TV platforms, by the way. And you can get a 65-inch U8G, which is an Android, for 950. So you under your $1,000 budget, you could actually get a 65-inch TV. Even better, Artings, the TV rating uh, review site, RTING.com. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, says that ratings the without the a ratings the, without the without a, the yes. vowels or no tings has a i it yeah. has an i in ratings the I, without right. the a anyway they say the uh, high sense u8g has better local dimming than the tcl so that's that's a pretty strong recommendation if you're okay with the android 
smart TV interface. Like you, I say Roku is yeah. the best smart TV I agree. interface. Yeah. By the way, uh, this uh, display that Micah bought, that was another yeah. complaint. Not only does it not have HDR, it doesn't have local dimming. So it's really. What? Yeah, for fifteen hundred bucks. Oh man! Does that have local dimming? Does what? Does that Mac iMac have local dimming? No, 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 no. They didn't have oh. local dimming back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm thinking the LG that I bought, the six hundred dollar LG 4K display that I bought, probably does because it's HDR. Mm. Uh, if, and it is, if it's HDR, then it probably does. Yeah, and Apple supports HDR. Interesting. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, but their but monitor they don't does make not. It in that, yeah, that makes no sense. Well, it's, I, it's I don't a know. little bit of an anic. You know, the, the story is that they designed it. This is what Mark Gurman told us on MacBreak Weekly. They designed it two years ago, and that maybe is a little telling that it's a mm. little bit of an older display technology, perhaps. Yeah, why didn't they update it? Yeah, and you know, so weird. It, uh, sixty hertz, not faster. There are a lot of displays. What? Not one hundred and twenty hertz? Wow, <laughs> your outrage I mean, is showing. I my outrage is showing. I mean, if you're if you're playing games on this thing, yeah. and I realize Mac is not you know the gaming platform. No, but that they should PC have it. Is, yeah, they should have 120 hertz, and they should have variable ref uh, refresh rate. Yeah, which they probably don't. At they may years. not have in the operating system. There may be an opera. I don't know. But this display definitely doesn't. So yes, it's not. Oh. It's not a very high end display. No, and but at a high end price, good golly. Well, it is Apple after all. <laughs> you have to pay for the logo, my friend. Uh, I guess don't make true. don't make uh, Micah feel bad. He bought feel bad. It. No, no, I don't. Actually, I wait don't a minute. You didn't to. buy it. I bought it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me feel I bad. Do, I, I have to say, I like the the idea of all in one. Micah mentioned yeah, that earlier. The all-in-one and uh, the 5K display for me. 5K. Because I've been using two old-school Dell monitors as my external monitors that are not that retina. Yeah, uh, level. yeah. So all of that coming mm -hmm. together is... That's a good point. Really I mean, the display it. I'm using is a 4K. It's not a 5K. Right. Anyway. And the, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there my you question, go. My question is to, to, to Micah is the color space, but we'll have to talk about that another it's time. It's P3. It is PC. Oh, okay. That's, that's pretty Scott good. Scott Wilkinson, Home Theater Geek. Find him at techhive.com and here every week. Hey, it rhymes. Sir, near, 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 zonk. You have. Tuvan throat singer. Yes. You have a bright halo. Below you, is there a light close to your camera or something? Well, no. See that? Hey, look at your picture. See Hang on a second. Hang on. It's, a maybe it's just over brightened. I don't it's know. It's just the angelic radiance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been playing with my settings. Um, I, I found a way to to get rid of the sparkly. Uh, well, you see, you know, do you see how bright it is? Like in the lower, in the lower left. Yeah, yeah, corner? yeah, yeah. I don't quite understand that. To tell you the truth, it must be, be local dimming on the webcam. Yeah. <laughs> Could be over brightened. Uh, you, you know, yeah. often I see this if there's kind of a light near the lens, it's it's flaring up into it. Mm -hmm. But if, you know, now that I look at that's, it, I think you've over brightened it. That's all. Yeah, that's what I, I'm thinking too. Yeah. So I am going to go to preferences. It's very crisp. Yeah. I mean, which what what camera are you using? I forgot. It's a Logitech 920. 920. Yeah, it's a good camera. Yeah, it's a good camera. Very okay, crisp. so I'm just gonna go. I think you over you overplayed your hand. I over brightened it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can easily change that. I can darken down the brightness. But you see, that's... Uh, that's not right either. That's not right either. It I've, almost I've been looks like it's still it. doing backlight compensation, even oh, though it uh, okay. shouldn't be. Yeah, hang on a second. I do have adjust for low light. Turn that off. Uh, turn that off. Boom! Oh, there you go. Now... <laughs> now reset, like, the brightness. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's fixed it. That was Zoom doing that. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, there you go. That's much better. Now you look more natural. Now you're normal. Right, right. Um, That's too bright. Can, little, one step down. Little, one step down, okay. Too bright, one step down. I can also increase Actually, my Actually, that looks saturation. really good. I know. I, I go full screen. Yeah. That's really good. Don't touch anything. <laughs> oh, <ooh. laughs> Unless you have a really good tan, because... But other than that, you look great. I don't have a and really good tan. there's a nice tan. flare around your cube up in the... Uh, over your left shoulder, and that's oh, perfect. Good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. You like that. Okay, good. I love it. Yeah, well, I love it. I love it. Excellent. You don't look like the angels are coming to get you now. <laughs> <laughs> Too well, soon. I really wanted to get rid of that um, 
that flickering effect on my clock, and I did that by increasing the exposure time. Yeah. Well, I don't see any flickering. I see everything nope. looks good. Yeah. Yeah, everything looks good. Yeah. Your globe my is lava rotating. lamp. Your lava lamp is lamping. <laughs> <laughs> my googly eye clock. So far, no one has noticed that yet. Oh, is those are those googly eyes? Those are googly eyes, and one of them is the hour, and one of them is the minute. Oh, wow. You and can, they slowly rotate bright. around. They're too bright to see the, the definition in the googly eyes, so oh, I can't okay. see the eyeballs, but that's awesome. Now that's that I know. really cool, yeah. Now that I know. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you guys for helping me with my uh, I with like my the halo. look now. I love it. Especially with, with grandma, grandma's uh, quilt. Grandma's uh, crochet, yes, indeed. Mike is a big crocheter. Are you really? Oh, yeah, he, I am. did you see this? He didn't. This he did. This he did a little Linux penguin for me. Wow, with a real hat. So he crocheted cool. the hat and everything. Wow, oh, he's very talented. Thanks. I uh, oh, wanted that's great. A, yeah. a new skill whenever the pandemic kicked off, and I took up knitting and crocheting. And uh -huh. uh, I really like crocheting uh, even more than than knitting. Oh wow! Then you then you know all about this. I do. Yeah. It's I funny because I took up sitting square. around in my boxers watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, was, uh, it worked well, I thought. Well, I'm sure you got really good at it, I too. did. <laughs> I'm You're excellent. a pro. Excellent. <laughs> Scott, you want to stick around for the top of the uh, sure. hour? Okay. Sure, happy to. Thank you, sir. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO. Micah Sargent, the tech guy, too, is here as well. Yes. Two, T -O -O. Uh On the line from Coldwater, Michigan. Jim. Hi, Jim. Yes, I'm here. Hello, Jim. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking my call, Leo. Thanks for and, calling. Uh, good afternoon to uh, Mike. Hello. Well. Yes. Well, I am, uh, first of all, I'm semi-technology challenged. Okay. Uh, even even though I'm WV0SS. Oh, well, you know, if you're an amateur radio operator, you, you're you Mr. Analog anyway. I should know better. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm in arguments with my outlook at work. Oh, everybody is. That's not, yeah. uh, that's, that's just normal. What's going on? Well, I'm running Windows 10. I got Outlook. It says PWA, whatever that means. That's a uh, progressive web app. So. Oh. Okay. This is this gets really complicated. So Outlook can be a number of things, it, and this is Microsoft's fault, to be honest. They use they they use the word Outlook for a lot of different things. There's Outlook.com, right. which is the website, and that can be a progressive web app, which means if you're in an appropriate browser, Chrome, uh, primarily Edge, I guess, will do it as well. Microsoft's browser, you can download the bits and pieces from the website and run it. As if it's a local app in its own window. Got it. Uh, it still, you still will need to be online to get mail and things like that. But it does, it does have some offline capabilities as well. So PWA is just a way of doing the website on your desktop. Okay. Then there's well, the other outlooks, which are the outlook that comes with Microsoft Office. <laughs> there's, I mean, they have a million names. And get ready because Project Monarch is coming along, which is going to mess everything up as we that we figured oh. out. Yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Microsoft. Well, <laughs> so at work, uh, when I set up an out-of-office, I'm going on vacation in a couple of weeks. I want to set up the out-of-office notice. Yep. And I can't find anywhere in the rules. What happens is uh, I get notifications from my wholesaler. I'm a sales rep. Yeah. And I'll get a notice that one of those do not respond to this email. Yeah, yeah, and it'll respond which, to it. <laughs> which sets up a death spiral endless loop. Oh, you're kidding, because then it says, no, no, I told you, do not respond, and then you respond again. It says, I told you. Wow. Well, last time my uh, internet provider cut us off at a thousand messages, which Oh, my God, it internet. went back and forth a thousand yeah. times? So yeah. that's a dumb out of office. Most out of offices, uh, Gmail included, will not respond to me for this very reason. Will not respond to a response from the out of office. It will only you can in fact look for a setting that says only send it once a week, or that kind of thing. You can also um, so it's under it's not a it's not a mail uh, rule. It's under automatic replies. Automatic replies. Okay. So it's in your settings, mail automatic replies. You could turn them on. You can say only set it during a certain time period. Um, actually, wait a minute. You want the, let me see, time period doesn't matter so much for 
out of office. So you won't worry about that. What I'm looking for is a way to say, do not respond to somebody not in my contacts. I used to have that in the yeah. former email program, but I don't see yeah. it. You can send replies outside your organization. Um, yeah, it looks like they don't... You know, this is the other problem. Of course, Microsoft wants to sell you a product. Sure. So the free product is maybe not going to have as many features as the Outlook application. Um, you might want to... If you really want to do this, you might need to download... Go to the um, Microsoft Store and download Outlook from the store. And I bet you it will... It's still free. It will probably have... Um, better choices here. This is very scant. Okay. This is not, but that's where you're supposed to do it is in automatic replies. And, and they made it more general than just vacation, in other words, but it's still the same idea. It's a, it's a reply that will go automatically out saying, I'm, look, I, I'm not going to respond right away. Automatic replies, yeah, this, no, wait a minute. I'm looking at their help thing. Automatic replies are sent once to each sender. Once. So it should not respond to anything else if it's coming from the same address. It shouldn't give you this death spiral. Did it? I, well, it did the last time. Yeah, well, that's... Um, fact, they cut off my... Uh, you know what? If you did it with a rule... Okay, that's why. You did it with a rule. Don't do it with a rule. Don't, okay. That's what it is. Do it with a rule. Yeah, that's why. Now I understand. Automatic replies are designed to not reply to the reply. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Saying, I told you not to respond to this mail. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, it only does it once. That's and may I ask one other question? Yes, please. Uh, I don't see any way to tell this outlook to remove the original email from a response. Remove the original email. Oh, when you uh, like re reply, and yeah, then it, underneath say... it puts the original. Correct. Yeah, there is a setting in there for that. I, well, can't, I sure can't find it. You may, you know, again, this might be a case because it's the free web mail version of this. That, oh, yeah. That's a feature they don't have. But they should. Every email package I've ever used gives you a choice. Look under comp Compose, the Compose settings. It'll give you a choice of when you're replying, copying. There should be three choices. Copy nothing, copy the text that's selected, or copy the entire previous message. Yeah, that's what I'm familiar with. And yeah. I, I don't see it, but there, I'll, I'll try downloading it, from the store and see if maybe... Maybe the store will have more capabilities, but uh, but look in the Compose mess menu. I don't have it in front of me, otherwise I would go through it, but I'm there's got to be a way to say how much of the previous message you would include. I it just may be, you know, they may have changed the terminology, you know. You're used to real mail. This is this is pseudo real mail. Gotcha. So yeah, yeah, get the get the get the Outlook app. Uh, it might work a little bit better. I'll do that, Leo. Yeah. And a question, what's that metallic cube on the top of your desk with the Oh, machine? see if you're a, a machinist, you would know. This is a uh what do they call it? A five by three by six cube. Machinists make these. They just take this is a brass brick, and they and they uh, and they put holes in it. But they're very precise, so it can be used just as a decoration or a paperweight because it's fairly heavy. But it also can be used. It's a three two one block. That's what it's called. Thank you, three two one block. So if you Google three two one block, you could probably f find one. I'm not a machinist, so I don't you know <laughs> have any real use for it. But I think yeah, it's cool. It is a it is an example of. Precision machining. How about that? Very nice. <laughs> you didn't ask me about my crocheted Linux penguin. That's for Micah Sargent. <laughs> I like the penguin better. <laughs> it's cushy and cute. <laughs> hey, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, the chat room just gave me a link uh, to how to control the original message in Outlook. Click the File tab. Click Options, click Mail under Replies and Forwards for when replying to message or when forwarding message, you'll see include the original message, default, include and indent the original message, prefix each line of the original message, attach original message, or do not include original message. Wow, look at all those. All this right. option is not available when forwarding messages. But, of course, there's no you have to include the message <laughs> yeah, if you're going to forward, forward it. So sure. that makes sense. They don't have the one feature that a lot of standalone packages have, which is just include the selected text. I often turn that on because then I control how much of the previous message gets sent along. Got it. Great. Thanks, whoever that was. Yes.
That was, of course, Scooter X, probably. I don't know. Hey, Scooter X. Yes, he's very good. He is. No, it was Sophia. Thank you, Sophia. Give credit where credit is due. And uh, we'll also put a link just for you uh, to Amazon's hardened preci precision machinist three, two, one blocks, one, two, three blocks. 23 holes. Oh, I see. I was counting the holes. It's one inch by two inches by three inches. Ah. That's the other thing. You could use this as a very good ruler. <laughs> a very heavy, very good ruler. I just like it because it, it's, it's, it's brass and it's just, it feels good. They may, the, the ones they're selling on Amazon look like they're steel, which means they're a little less expensive. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, you know, a pretend machinist. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys. More of your calls coming up. Everybody just says, you can use them for many different things. Many different things are what you could use it for. You could use it for a pen holder. So, can you tell us? Not a good pen holder, <laughs> but a pen holder. You could use it, uh, I don't know. A paperweight, I guess. It's it's a really good paperweight. I just like it because it's... And a cool little art work. It's technology. Uh, it's why I like it. I like, everything in here has a technology hook, right? Mm-hmm. Including... Santa Claus himself, Mr. Scott Wilkinson. <laughs> I love it. When I say that, he gives a ho-ho-ho. I know, it's so okay. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. All yours for the next eight minutes, Scott. Thank you so Enjoy. very much. There I are two, shall. four, six blocks, but I have a one, two, three block. A one, two, three block. That's kind of cool. I, I might have to yeah. get one of those. Um, Andy, I was Andy Anako told me about these. But you know, I also have little tiny origami boxes next to them. So I have lots of... I'm one of those guys... I'm, I'd probably be a hoarder when I grow up. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm close to that now. Well, moving Although helps. With, you have to get rid oh, of everything. Oh, man, yeah. I got rid of uh, probably 30% of all my stuff when I moved. That's a good feeling, isn't it? Endless. It's it hard when you're actually. doing it, but once you're done, it's great. It's, it feels great. Yep. That's right. Yep. And we're finally, we've got our living room set up, and everything's uh, starting to gel nice. here in the new nice. house. So. I'm so glad. So happy about that. So, yeah. Hey, Micah, next time you come down to Santa Cruz, let me know. He says, yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually out getting coffee, but I'll... I'll oh, good. I'll, well, I'll, you should go get some coffee, too. I'll give him the word. You take over. Thank you very much. Here we go. <clears throat> so, hello, everybody. So happy to see you all on this uh, slightly rainy Saturday here in Santa Cruz, anyway. Uh, Gumby is asking uh, for an under $600 TV, 42 to 50 inch, that I don't want to be smart. What are my options? I'm afraid there probably aren't any. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's just that there are no dumb TVs anymore. They're all smart. Um, what can I tell you? And as I as I said, I think on the uh, on the show itself, the brand I would look at is TCL or Hisense. Uh, TCL has Roku TVs. I bought. I actually bought when we moved into this house before we had any of our regular stuff here. I bought a TCL uh, forty inch uh, Roku TV. I think it was a Series Four, just to have a, an extra little TV at Best Buy. $200, $200 for a 40-inch TV with Roku. And, you know, because you can't get a dumb TV, there's no uh, really no such thing as a, as a TV without uh, smarts, without online streaming apps. Uh, Roku is the one to get. Uh, now, as we'd mentioned, as I mentioned on the show, uh, it, it looks like that may be more expensive. But still, a 40-inch TV for $200? I mean, geez, that's that's really something. I guess the I guess the only way to get a dumb TV is not to buy a TV at all, but to buy a computer monitor, and those tend to be more expensive. We were talking about this new Apple monitor, fifteen hundred bucks. I don't know what size it is. Somebody will tell me. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so I would look at uh, TCL. Um, the 55 inches, I said the Roku was 950, and you want to be under 600. Uh, so that means probably going to the 4 series, which I don't think has local dimming. Uh, but, you know, for that kind of money, 
you could save a lot on on getting this 40 and you want a 42 to 50 and 42 is just slightly under that uh so you know uh i would look at, at tcl for sure Adam24 says, what kind of a home theater system did you have back in the 80s? <laughs> back in the 80s, I had a, I believe it was a 32-inch CRT TV, a Panasonic, uh, that was, must have weighed 300 pounds. Um, and it was 32 inches, but that was the 80s. Um, and I think think I was playing it through a stereo receiver. As I recall, I took the audio out, analog audio out, and put it in a Yamaha stereo receiver, and that was my sound system. So it wasn't surround. It wasn't a flat panel. It was very small. But in the 80s, that's what it was. Um, yes, Tech Dino. Congratulations on right sizing. Exactly. And Phoenix Warp 1, of course, you know what that means. Now you can buy 30% more new stuff. <laughs> I hope not. I'm, I'm still dedicated, and this may change, you know, it's hard to say, but I am dedicated not to acquire a bunch of new stuff. Uh, once we leave the rental and actually have our own house here in Santa Cruz, we may need to buy some new furniture. That's hard to say. But in terms of stuff, I'm hoping not. I got rid of I got rid of a bunch of videotapes and CDs, not C, not uh, uh, recordable CDs things I had recorded uh, uh, on them. And I found a great service called Green Disc, uh, which takes your all your techno trash. I really want to recycle stuff as much as I can. And my electronics recycling in Burbank would take equipment and stuff, but they wouldn't take media. And so, but tech, uh, Green Disc will. And they'll take cables and ink cartridges. And I mean, I recycled the ink cartridges uh, at Staples or Office Backs. Um, but but there's it's very difficult to find out where to recycle videotapes and recordable CDs. I had boxes of CDs that were press kits from CES, Cedia, all the trade shows I used to go to. Uh in the day, back in the day, they gave you a CD as a press kit, and I had boxes of them, and I and I wanted to get rid of them in a responsible way, and I found this company, Green Disc. You buy, you can do it a couple ways, but basically, you pay them for a box to fill up with stuff, or you can fill up your own box with stuff, and you pay them, and you ship it to them, and they presumably, hopefully... Uh, dispose of it, recycle it in some sort of responsible way. So uh, <clears throat> that that was an important uh, thing that I got got rid of a lot of stuff that way. I also made innumerable trips to the thrift store, and I also sold a bunch of CDs and DVDs, stuff I was never going to watch again, to a record store around the corner from my house in Burbank, and that that was really great. I made some some good money on that. Uh, Redacted says, I look and sound great. Thank you very much. I've, I've been, you know, working to set this up. I want to make sure it's good. Uh, Doug M, yeah, LaserDisc. Um, LaserDisc library. I didn't have that many LaserDiscs. Oh, Grand Dam. My, any thoughts on the Sound United sale? Yeah, I just saw that recently. I don't know what it means. Um, I hope my friends who work there still have jobs. I, I need to call them, actually, and uh, and find out what's going on. But, uh, yeah, that's that could be... That could could be a big change or could be... I, I, I forget now. I'd have to look it back up. Um, the... Uh, uh, I forget they they sold to a Swiss company. I've forgotten now, but that's Denon and Marantz and um, B and W. I think no, maybe not B and W. I've forgotten all who's under the Sound United umbrella, but a lot of companies. Tech Dino, yes, I have visited my alma mater. It's right up the street from my house. Um, I took my wife on a tour so she could see where I went to college. 
Uh, faux pas says uh, 90 zones for local dimming versus 360 for local dimming. Does this affect how dark the black colors are? Yes, it does. In a way. More to the point, it affects how much haloing there is around a bright, small object on a dark background. So the more the better there. Always the more the better. Always the more the better. (laughs) Thank you, Mr. Scott. My pleasure. Micah says he wants to come to visit you in Santa Cruz. Please do. All right. Welcome anytime. Show me things outside of the boardwalk. Yes, he's only seen the boardwalk. Oh, man, there's so much more to see. That's what I just told him. Yeah. Got to take you to Gail's Bakery, man. Oh, Gail's. All right. Thanks, Scott. (laughs) Well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy, Micah Sargent, tech guy too. We are answering your questions at 8888-ASK. Leo, trying not to only gush about our Apple (laughs) devices not a lot of gushing on the studio displayed part, except for me. I'm very happy about that. Well, yeah, and I don't want to sound too negative either because um, I, they're great devices. And, you know, the Mac Studio is fantastic. It's quiet. It's efficient. We'll see. It's not a Mac Mini. I think that's the thing to really make clear. It's the same footprint, but it's taller, mm-hmm. more than twice as tall. It really is like a, uh, I, I wouldn't call it a Mac Mini, and they don't notice. It's really a Mac Pro Absolutely. Junior. A Mac Pro, Mac Pro junior. junior. There we yeah. go. <laughs> 8888, ask Leo the phone number. Uh, when you hear us talk about things like uh, the link that we uh, we talked about with our last caller about getting Outlook to do uh, replies and so forth, that will all end up in the show notes. Thanks to Micah at uh, techguylabs.com. Links. Uh, a transcript, full transcript of the show will be there uh, with time codes plus audio and video from the show. So that site should have everything you need to uh, figure out what it is that we said that made you so excited way back when. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. Uh, on we go with the show, and our next caller is Paul from San Fernando Valley, California. Hi, Paul. Hi, Leo. How are you? Wonderful. Welcome. Thanks for hanging on. Yeah, um, I just wanted to rant about uh, Microsoft. <laughs> I uh, bought a subscription to 365 Office through Costco.com for yeah. a cheaper price and a longer term. Oh, you're kidding. And Costco I, charged you more than if you just bought it online? Yeah, from Microsoft. Yeah, it's 15 months for eighty nine ninety nine. Well, um, no, that's good. Actually, that's three months extra, isn't it? Yep, for $10 less. Yeah. And so... So I did that twice. I came up for my renewal this year, and I did the same thing. I got the product key from Costco.com, and it wouldn't activate. Oh. Yeah, repeatedly I called the concierge. They couldn't help. They couldn't help. You know, they sent me another product key. Still no good. And what? I kept getting this. Yeah, I kept getting this pop-up. Buy, you know, buy, buy from us, like. You know, and so I had all my homemade forms on there. The time was running out, and then I ran out of time, and I had to end up getting it from Microsoft. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, but Costco uh, will give you your money back, right? I mean, that's one reason to buy something at Costco. Yes, yeah, they did. Yeah. And so, um, but you did pay. Had, you pay a little bit more. That's weird. I mean, I would have not just called Costco. I would have called Microsoft. Uh, you can't get through. They gave me the number. You can't get through to anybody. Doesn't no, work. Nobody answered. Uh, they tell you to go to support. Yeah. You know, so they don't really answer the phone. Oh. They send you a website. Okay. And so um, you can't even talk to anybody. And so you go there. They give you a sixty nine ninety nine option for one use. Right. Or 99 for five. Right. And so I just got the one, but then it didn't work. I wonder. I then needed to think, uh, renew, take the 99.99. I ended up having to do that. And so then it works. But huh. I just wanted to rant to Microsoft that if you guys want to break your contract with Costco, break it. I would, want, I would look at the fine print, make sure it's not... F- 
Costco may be selling, and I've got every time I get a PC, I will get this coupon for first time subscribers, like a first time deal. And I'm wondering if that's what Costco's selling. It would say it somewhere, obviously, but it may not say it in big letters. Uh, and if that's what Costco's selling, well, yeah, that would make sense. You could, in fact, it's surprising you could renew it once. Um, otherwise, that's you're right. It's they sh somebody. There's a disconnect somewhere somehow. Scooter X, right. Scooter X found it in the chat, and I'm not seeing any notice that it Costco, is only oh, for it's new the members. family 15 month subscription. Yeah. 12 versus 12 months, three months free for up to six people. So Costco's selling it online and it- Even still, yeah. Even still, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know who your beef is at this point with. It's Is it Costco for selling something that doesn't work? Or is it, I mean, at least they give you your money back, but, or is it Microsoft? There is a micro, I mean, I can give you the Microsoft number if you want to yell at them. <laughs> well, no, I have it, but I have several. Yeah. But they send you to support. Oh, they won't. Online. They won't help you online. Oh, okay. They yeah, won't help you on the yeah, phone. And, I see. Yeah, and um, uh, they're still under license. They're still under contract with Costco. Yeah. So and, then maybe it is Costco's fault. I, I, I it, you know. It's Costco, so I'm, I'm not. They're not doing what some uh, sh much more shady operators would do. For instance, it's not at all unusual to separate those license cards from the new PC. Some shady retailers, not Costco, might do that and sell it separately, and it doesn't work because somebody else already activated it. That kind of thing. Uh, I don't know why Costco's selling something that uh, that doesn't work. Uh, and I don't know it's who bizarre. to blame. I don't think it's Microsoft. I think it's Costco. But maybe those are maybe they were out of date. I don't know. Um, we have the link, Costco.com. They're selling it. I'm I'm looking at it right now. Um, I just find it bizarre that Microsoft sent uh, sent you a new code, and that code also didn't work. Yeah, that makes Microsoft very 365 sense. personal, 12 month subscription, e delivery, 58.99. Product code delivered by email. Now, this is the one-person subscription. So let me see. Um, he's He got the family the family plan. Um, but, yeah, they're selling it. And they're, they, you don't even have to go to Costco to get it. In fact, I don't even know if you have to have a Costco membership to get it. Microsoft 365 family, 15-month subscription, e-delivery, $89.99. For use on multiple PCs, Macs, tablets, phones. So you should be able to activate it on a total of, uh, I think, six devices. Limit five per member. Maybe he bought too many. Make sure you double check your email address when you place your order. If you're giving this as a gift, you'll need to make sure the email address associated with the shipping address has been entered and it's accurate. So it's tied to your email address. That's fairly important. Make sure you're using the same email address that you bought it with. For iPad, Android, or Windows, full installed versions, new upgrades already. It sounds like that's the only caveat. It doesn't have to be a first-time buyer. But, the, but they say it several times in bold. Recipient's email address must match the email address you bought it with. So if your Costco membership, for instance, is under a different email address, that won't work. It has to be the email address that you bought it with is the email address you activate it with. That's the only thing I can think of. If you have issues, access your purchase at the digital order portal. And there are digital order portal facts. I mean, I, you know, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Amazon also uh, offers this. <laughs> uh, apparently, there are a lot of companies doing this. This is Microsoft's way of getting you in the fold. And frankly, it is a better, from my opinion, it's a better deal uh, than buying it outright. You know, gosh, what does it cost to get Office in a box? Hundreds and hundreds yeah, of dollars. Yeah, it's expensive. I think it's a better deal to buy the subscription. I'm sorry you had that experience. You've told the world, Paul. 8888 Ask Leo, the phone number, techguylabs.com, the website. We'll take more of your calls in uh, just a little bit. Um, Micah Sargent and uh, Leo Laporte, your two tech guys today. Saturday is a double tech guy day. It is indeed. I like that. If I could only. Uh, 
persuade him to work for free, he'd come in tomorrow. <laughs> Haven't been able to do that. You did get a nice smack and a I, monitor, Oh boy, here you? we go. It's got warm in I'm here. not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I just, you know. Yeah, just remember who uh, who takes care of you. There. That's all I'm what was that? <laughs> Sorry, got to take these ears out. <laughs> When's your studio come? March 30th. March 30th to April 6th. Yeah, that means March 30th. Hopefully. They always do that. Yeah, they always give you that window. Yeah, mine comes uh, March 30th, too. I'm curious, though. Are you going to do a swap it with Lisa? Swappy? <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you, you know me so well. Yeah, yeah. A little swappy swappy. You, you know me very well. I've been thinking. I don't know. You might have to brute force a couple of, uh, of those coding projects next year. Uh, or the, it, year. I don't think advent of code would be much faster, honestly. Look, I'm um, trying to give you reasons. I know. <laughs> um, she loved it. Is that, gonna, is that one going to be delivered here? Yeah, I know. Home. Oh. Why? Oh, wait, no. It, I should have, darn it. I should have yesterday. We should have uh, thrown some stuff at it. I want to kind of see it, try to put a motion project together. Yeah, I was uh, actually, um, Aunt, Anthony has, um, Anthony Nielsen has a, a, a big motion project that we used last time. And then I, ha I forgot to ask uh, Alex for his photogrammetry. The problem is I have to install that app and he has to give me his data file. But um, let me let me do that actually right now. I'll Slack. Good idea. I'll, I'll email him and say, hey, send me. And then Lisa will not be able to use her Mac for a while. So, oh. Leo Laporte. The Tech Guy, 8888, Ask Leo. Micah Sargent's here as well. We're taking your calls, talking high tech with Jim in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hello, Jim. Hello. Hello, Hi, done, Leo. Good to have you. Welcome. Got a, got a question. My uh, mother-in-law recently passed, and my father-in-law wants to make a slideshow uh, of a bunch of photos he has. Yeah. And he bought some USB Thunder Eyes already, I guess. The problem is... Well, he's all ready now. <laughs> that's funny that that's yeah. the first thing he should do. I got some thumb drives. Yeah. <laughs> now what? But he, the problem is uh, the, the friends and relatives, everyone's on different platforms. No, yeah, that's not the easiest he, way to do Google, it. Yeah. iOS, Android. So I'm wondering... Google Photos. I'm on a Mac. I'm wondering what app I should use to make it. And How to make it. Uh, you, and, you, and you want all these other relatives to contribute photos to it. Um, they, he's already got them all ready. To oh, okay. So you don't have to... Okay, that's why I was saying Google Photos, because that would be yeah. easy to make an album that everybody yeah. uploads to. And you could certainly make a simple right. album out of that. Slideshow. Yeah. Right. And something, if I can put it on a... Still put them on some drives, I don't know if I yeah, can... Yeah, yeah, you sure can. That, like so you already have a, one program right. that'll do a good job with this, which is iMovie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other one is also free that would do a good job with this is Keynote. And Photos will also do it. Yeah. And photos, photos itself, the we'll do a slideshow. Uh, I've it's, got a link for you. It kind of depends know. what uh, features you want. If really you just want, you know, music, maybe some text, and pictures that slide or move, or you know, the the thing that everybody wants to do is that effect that they used in the Civil War, the Ken Burns effect, that where oh, yeah. you know, remember he did the documentary. Of course, there's no video from the Civil War, but he brought it to life by panning in, zooming out moving around on a still picture makes it kind of brings it to life. And so that's mm -hmm. the, they actually literally call it the Ken Burns effect in iMovie. And, uh, and so iMovie will do that beautifully. iMovie does not require video. It'll do, uh, it's all of its iMovie things, including everything I just described with stills as well. And you just drag them in, make them the timeline. It's maybe a little bit more work because it's not automated at all. You're doing it all hand sure. by hand. So for 300 pictures, not a big deal. For 3,000, big deal. So it just depends on how long you want this movie to be and, right. and so forth. Uh, yeah, I think Apple's photos would do it yeah. kind of automate in an automated fashion. They have the... Lots of modern technologies effect. that they do as yeah. well to make sure that the music matches based oh, on the Oh, they do the beat matching yeah. and all that. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Um, mm. I've got a link to the support document that walks you all the way through this. Techguylabs.com is where we'll post that. And that way, uh, what's, what's great about this page is that uh, the page at the bottom, it has a link to export slideshows. So you learn how uh, to export them for whatever file type you need. Um, Leo suggested Google Photos as a way to share the link with multiple people. Even 
even an unlisted YouTube video would be an option where all you have yeah, to do is share a link thumb with drives. people. You don't have to yeah. send anybody a thumb you drive. You have the thumb drive. So yeah. what you'll end up doing if you get a thumb drive is you'll, you'll make a movie, an MP4 movie, which you'll put on the thumb drive because that's the only way to get the animation and the music and all of that. Okay, great. Yeah, I was thinking it was probably going to be one of those apps, but... It's been so long. Since well, it's I've not. The nice like thing is, Apple provides you. These are all free apps that come with a Mac that are quite capable. Microsoft just right. bought, believe it or not, a video editing program uh, that, uh, because, the, you know, the, for years, Windows came with Movie Maker, which was not great, but it was something. I think they still have some video editing, but Microsoft just bought a much better uh, video editing program. Uh, company, uh, and I think they're going to start building that into Windows. But right now, Apple's the king on this. They they provide you with three different ways to do it. Great. I've got a new M1 iMac. So oh, you're in luck. Uh, Which one did you get? I got the, uh, the the middle one. The middle one of? of the like I love the model that comes with the 8 gigs, and it has the, the 4. You got the new studio? Yeah. No, no, no. Just the, the, the just laptop. The 24 inch iMac. Oh, the iMac. Oh, those. You know, I'm thinking yeah. I should replace this with the iMac. At first, I, I, I poo pooed it because I thought, oh, it's, you know, 24 inch screen. You know, it's only the M1. But now that I'm learning that the M1 is the same single core all the way across, yes. I'm realizing yeah, it's going to be fine. Wait for 27. Yeah, and I don't know if, you know, this is, there's some question about whether Apple's going to do a big iMac again. Because they are, in effect, making something like that with a studio. I'm going back and forth on it. The rumor mill initially said, no, that's the, there's no more 27-inch iMac. We had heard rumors there'd be a 30 or 31 or 32-inch iMac. Same size body, but with no bezels, because this has a big bezel around it. But mm -hmm. um, when they released the 24, everybody said, wow, that's interesting. And now that they've released the Studio Plus monitor... Their rumor is uh, that's it, no more IMAX. But I don't. I think they will do a higher end IMAX, but it'll be e either late this year or early next. Yeah, it's I gonna had be to a while. This one, so I could not. Wait. You got the right one, and that. Uh, which color did you get? That's the most important thing. I I actually went with silver. I do photo editing, so I wanted something uh, smart. Smart, yeah. So you already do photo editing. What do you use for that? Yeah, I do Photoshop all day. Photoshop. I've been using Photoshop since version one. Do you so. use Lightroom at all? I do. Lightroom also has a slideshow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so now you have four ways you can do it. <laughs> there we go. I would, I, here's the point. Don't buy anything. You have so many good ways to do this. You don't have to buy anything. Sure. Hey, now I get why you're nominated to do this. Are mm -hmm. you a photographer? Yeah. I, I do photography, not professional, but yeah. I've yeah. been taking photos since a kid. So, yeah. yeah. And you're happy with the, um, the iMac? I am. I think that's what I'm going to, because I need to replace this uh, 5K iMac because it's eight years old now. I think maybe that's what I'll, yeah, I might get purple. 2014 and yeah, I got recommended from, uh, you probably have heard Terry White that works sure. with Adobe and he, sure. he recommended. Terry's great. To me. And he said it works yeah. well with, that's interesting, with Photoshop and it does. Mm -hmm. See, that proves my point. Yep. Photoshop will use multiple processors if you're doing a lot of Gaussian blurs, but who does Gaussian blurs, really? No. <laughs> I guess if you're doing stacking, if there's a few things you might do that the multiprocessors would help, but you're saying the responsiveness is fine. Great. That's yeah. really good to know. All right, you just sold me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. But good news, you don't have to pay a penny to do your slideshow. That's a very nice thing you're going to do for the family. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, thank both of you. All right, our yeah. pleasure. So you th it sounds like you think he should just use Photos because yep. it's already in Photos. It's built into Photos. It's incredibly easy to do. Apple has all that stuff built in, and that is where they're paying the most attention for those features to make a really good slideshow. Yeah. So it's almost more complicated, overcomplicating things to jump out of that. Since we are, again, talking about Apple, we only have a minute, so I can't take another call, I will say one more thing which is if you're in the market for a new M1, you should know the stores do have even the latest Mac Studio display and the Mac Studio, but what they generally have is the kind of the bottom of the line of whatever you're getting. Uh, I looked at our local store. They don't have the Ultra anymore. They must have had one that they sold, but they do have the Studio with the M1 Max in it available, uh, as long as you're willing to get the, the kind of the low-end base model. So if you are in the market, uh, as I now am for an iMac, <laughs> uh, 
uh, and you want to get it, you know, if you order an M1 Max now, it's three months out. Mm hmm. Or M1 Ultra, I should say. It's three months out. But uh, you can go down to the store, the Apple store, if you have one near you, and many people do, and uh, get it today. Like I'm going to later today. Leo Laporte. <laughs> Leave that guy. <laughs> Johnny Jet coming up. Hey, Johnny! Hey! I almost said... I well, Should I get purple? Pink? I don't even know what the color is. Orange. I like the orange a lot. Tim likes the purple. I think purple's a pretty regal color. It's regal. All right. Johnny, did you get a oh, new yeah. laptop or no? Not yet. Get a Mac. I, You know, you said you want a Windows. My, 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 my wife says the same thing, but listen, I've spent 20-something years on a PC. You my first thing. computer was a Mac. I'm so I bet sorry. you you also <laughs> spent 20 years drinking Coors Light, but at some point you got to grow up. <laughs> Do you really think? Because I, I came this close to dropping it, and I actually went to buy it because I contacted HP. They did not have another battery, so I was going to buy the newer model. The Spectres and, are beautiful. I, I have a Spectre. I love it. And I didn't buy it because the one they recommended only comes in silver. and I was. Oh, like, no, no. You want it, the copper. That's what I said. I know. And, um, so that's why I did not pull a trigger. They have a leather went, one. Do you leather? want leather? Oh, my. <laughs> leather. <laughs> Yes. No. Yes. You don't want a leather computer? No. I'm not like hanging out. I'm not In the bars. Uh, no. Uh, I think those are very nice. I just, I really, uh, you're a, you know, you're, you're a left brain kind of guy. I'm a lefty too. Yeah. Well, that means you're a right brain kind of guy. Well, I'm, I write lefty. I, play I can never tennis remember. Right, I play Which tennis righty, side? ping pong lefty. Which lefty's is the scientific creative. side? They say that uh, lefties are the creatives yeah. with the right side of their brain. Right side of the and brain. And righties are more scientific, more scientific with the left side of their brain. The, so the Mac is for lefties. Yeah. Well, then I need a Mac. You're a lefty know, too, right? Of course. We're all lefties in this room. Yep. Raise well. your hand if you have a Mac. No, he doesn't have a Mac. <laughs> I know. He needs but to get on you it. also have tech support with Natalie. <laughs> I do. And also but. with Leo every Saturday. I'll support you with whatever you got. So he asked me what he should replace the Spectre with. I said, the, spe the new Spectres are great. And they, they still do make a copper one, by the way. Uh, I, I mean, tech support called me. I yeah, mean, but left-handers use the right side of the brain, yeah, exactly. John. So that's what we were saying is that left-handers, because weirdly enough, a lefty has a right dominant gotcha. brain. So that means lefties would be more artistic. And lefties are also the only ones in the right uh, because they use the right side of the brain. Yes. 10% ten percent, ten percent of the world is lefty. I know we're such a minority. It's wild. <sighs> yeah, just, we're minorities so. in so many ways. Okay, Leo. Except for me. I'm okay, boomer. Old, I'm an old white man. <laughs> oh my. I'm an old baby boomer. Uh, okay, I'm going to go to the Apple store. Oh, my God. Okay, the teal is really pretty. Is the teal pretty? They call it green, but it's not green. It's a uh, Teal's a nice color, too. Uh-huh. You will kind of. It's I mean, it's in the rich. studio, so it should be lovely looking. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's time for Johnny Jet. Our traveling guy joins us every week to talk about travel. It's. I admit. I admit the last two years have been kind of scant, travel wise. Yes. Dull. More people That's an understatement. flew last week. Than have flown, even then flew in 2019. Well, yesterday, over 2.3 million people passed through TSA checkpoints, and that's the most since uh, the Sunday after Thanksgiving this year. And the numbers are up, they're going to go up. We're, we're still not quite there, although the Delta CEO, Delta Airline CEO this week said that last week they had their best week ever. Actually, he has a quote. Yeah. They had the busiest booking day in the in its history last week. Wow. Ever. And ever. And he said he's now seeing the strongest demand in his career. He also said that he expects domestic airfares are going to jump between five and ten percent and the international routes will even go higher. Wow. So I just spent the all morning writing a post about ten ways on how to save booking airfares. Because you still can, you just gotta be creative. Yeah. So I'm happy to talk about some of them or just I'll post it in the uh, chat oh, room. Talk, talk about it, man. Talk about it. Well, I mean, there's. I'm not going to go through all 10, but <laughs> number one, 
I always say this, you have to be flexible. You're not going to be able to get a deal when everyone else is flying. And I use screenshots from like LA to London. And I showed that how much it costs in July. And then it, it's, it's a, you know, 30% less if you leave middle of August. And also if you leave in, in the middle of the week, you save a lot of money. So every route is different, but you have to look and just try and figure out when people are not flying. And that's when you want to do it because you'll have the best experience. The plane won't be as crowded and uh, you'll save money most importantly. But um, also always look for where these new routes are popping up. We talked about it last week. I said Breeze Airways. They had new routes from San Francisco and LA. They had 35 new routes, you know, with introductory fares for $99. Whenever an airline launches a new route, almost always do they put it on sale. And that's when you jump on it. Or if a new airline pops up or starts flying to a new destination, you got to jump on it. They're losing money though, probably. Yeah. On those or no. Oh, for sure. The first few years. It's just to get you in the door. Oh, they're going to lose money in the first few years. Probably. Yeah. I mean, it all depends. I mean, look at, look at wow. Airlines used to be the low fare carrier out of Iceland. They, they're out of business, but they would put fares on for like $99 to Europe, sometimes even cheaper. And then they would just get you on the uh, on all the extras. So you have to be careful about low fare carriers. I talk about this in my article when as well. I was a Make kid, sure. and this is, as you know, 100 years ago, <laughs> we would uh, go to Europe via Icelandic airlines. You had to stop in Reykjavik. Is that still a thing? Yeah, of course. And that's what, wow, airlines, their whole thing was. And now there's actually a new Icelandic airline that's trying to compete with Ice- Iceland Air. And, um, but listen, Iceland- You had just- to go through Iceland- but it was like really a cheap way to go to Europe. Everybody, everybody Definitely. I knew, that's how they would go to Europe. That's why there, there's the Blue Lagoon. It's only 20 minutes away from Kefalik Airport, which is where you fly oh, to. So you, you go, go to, to Reykjavik. You go to Reykjavik. You go, you go to the Blue Lagoon. You Even see Even on it. a long layover. Even like a three-hour layover, you could go to the Blue Lagoon. So Nice. But Iceland's beautiful country. It's really yeah, expensive. You really should say, I'll take a couple of days in Iceland on the way. I think Definitely. that was the and they deal. Offer I think you could do that. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They still offer these free stopovers. And a lot of other airlines are trying to do the same. Actually, what's going on with Russia, you know, closing the airspace, Alaska used to be the same way as Iceland. So they're trying to reposition themselves saying, hey, when you're going to Asia, stop off in Anchorage. Yeah. Um, but they're having a hard time trying to woo these airlines. That's what they want to do right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it, uh, is it like going spirit? Like you're going to have no leg room? Is it, you pay for every not, not buy a bag, things like that? Well, or? this new airline, um, uh, let's see, I'm spacing on the name, but Iceland Air, you know, it's borderline. It's not a low cost carrier. It's not carrier, luxury. But, it's not. But they do charge, they'll charge you for food. If you want to lie you. flat, it'll be in the aisle. In other words. Yeah, but yeah. I, I was on the inaugural once on Iceland Air from San Francisco to, uh, Reykjavik, and it's only a seven and a half hour flight. And from from the east coast, it's five hours to Iceland. People don't realize how close Europe is. And then it's just another two two hour jump, or wherever you're going, right. you know, two hours of London, or two and a half. Yeah. So uh, it's it's a great little layover, and I I really do, um, you know, Iceland's one of the most beautiful natural landscape uh, countries, like Norway, Switzerland, New Zealand. It's, it's up there. Nice. So keep that in mind. Keep in but mind. But anyway, keeping it getting back to, yes. to making some, um, saving some money. Also, if you are going to Europe, you can look at buying two separate tickets. Two? You know, one time, yeah, one time I was going to Sardinia and the airfares were like, you know, $2,000 one way. So I was like, I'm like, I can't afford that. So I bought a one way ticket from New York to London for like $600. And then I bought a separate ticket the following day on a low fare carrier to Sardinia for less than a hundred. So wait. I saved over a thousand dollars. If you buy a one-way ticket, are you yep. more likely to get that SSS on your boarding pass? Yeah, the, four, the four S's? Yes. I mean, you are, but all they're going to do is take you aside and just, you know, look at you a little <laughs> bit more. What do those S's mean? Uh, it's, a, it's a security thing, but... You, you get know. an extra little, extra something. Oh, you never got four S's? Run, I've never been out of the country. Then in case you're trying to run you, away, is that what it no, is? No, 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 no. It's a sign... That you need to get a special search. So before you get on the plane, they actually go through everything. But it's and it's not every your and especially right after nine. Sometimes it's ra- sometimes it's completely random. Totally, you could have a yeah. round trip ticket, and, yeah. and they don't do it every time you have a one-way ticket. It stands ticket. for secondary security screening selection. Gotcha. And that means trouble. 
<laughs> most of my tickets, most of the tickets I buy, I buy one way because I change my schedule. So oh, frequently. so you're used to it. So it's not the end of the world. You don't get, you know, the stink eye and well, you do. No, but when you're traveling to Europe or especially it's a red flag. Europe. Yeah. Well, you don't want to even buy it a one way because it actually does cost more than mm. a round trip. Sometimes you just want to buy a round trip because you'll you'll save money and don't even fly that last leg. Although the airlines do not like oh, talking about this, they don't like that at all. Yeah. No, but anyway, back to that point. You can just fly, you know, two by two separate tickets. Just make sure you leave plenty of time because sometimes, like the, my flight to London, left out of a different airport, so you can't do it in the same day. You spend the night, relax, and if you miss that flight on these low fare carriers. You're done, and they're also going to get you on bags. So you're really going to make sure you pack light. Read every, even the mainline carriers, you have to read the fine print and find out how much baggage you're allowed, if you're even allowed to bring a bag on the plane or in the carry-on. So, But th the point is you you work it, right? And the way you do that is you subscribe to Johnny's newsletters and the Points Guy and all these other newsletters, and you kind of you study it, right? And if Definitely. There's a there's a bunch of newsletters to sign up. Obviously, I want you to sign up to mine, but also a, one that I really like is Scott's Cheap Flights. You've mentioned he that before, a, Scott's Cheap he, Flights. You yeah, pay for that, nice though, job. right? It's not a cheap... No, there's a free version and there's a paid version. Ah, okay. So the free version, you know, I, th I think they wait a little bit before they give you the, the, the uh, stuff so other people can then book it. But, you know, other all these other bloggers... They're the ones that do the, the mistake fairs, right? When there's like the, they oops, do. the oops fair. And also, it's really flyertalk.com. You go on to Flyer Talk, it's been around for 20-something years. It's a chat room, old school. But this is where all a lot of the bloggers find their information because people post these uh -huh. deals. They're like, oh my God, check out this a mistake fair. And then they write about it. So, so, so if you, you could do it yourself, I guess. If you, definitely. If you want to bypass... Newsletters, you go to flyertalk.com and then just check out all these different hang in the hang in the rooms, chat rooms, set up some yeah. alerts and some bots, and just be have eight screens in front of you. And you constantly, but, but then you can't go anywhere because you got to keep <laughs> everything up to date. And, and you need, sounds like, fun. but the problem with mistake fares, by the way, is that the airlines don't have to honor them, oh. most of them do because it's. It's good for good PR. Right. But sometimes they don't. So if you do buy one, you don't want to start booking like non-refundable hotels uh -huh. or car rentals and things like that until you know it's going to go. See, this is why we listen to Johnny Jet. He is the travel guru. JohnnyJet.com is his website. There's great articles there. JohnnyJet.com slash newsletter. He's got multiple newsletters, all free because he's nuts. <laughs> uh, but lots of great information in there. Follow him on Instagram at JohnnyJet, on Twitter at JohnnyJet. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. Safe travels. You going anywhere this week? You never know. Ooh. I don't even know. He's a traveling man. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Ooh. Ooh. I've been everywhere, man. You know what I forgot to mention last week, and I, again, didn't have time this week, but oh. I'll make a note for next week, is that um, Crystal Cruises has a website for people to file claims. Because they uh, went out June. of business, right? Did anybody yeah. buy them yet? Nope. Is anybody I, I, gonna, you think? Well, they have three ships, so they have a brand new one that a lot of people are going to be interested in, and then they have two oh. older ships. So instead of buying the line, they may just sell exactly. the ships. Exactly. That made me That's so sad because uh, I always wanted to go because I'd heard very good things about Crystal. They were one of the five, the four five star cruise lines. I'd never been on one, but oh. actually, I'm about to interview um, one of my buddies who's been on hundreds of cruises after this oh. to talk about you know the cruise industry. Will that be on your YouTube? Yes. I'm oh, I will watch I'll, that. Have it out today. Because uh, so it was Seaborn, Regency, uh, Region Seven Seas, uh, Silver Sea, which is the one we go on a lot. Uh, Crystal, and who was the fifth one? I can't remember. Maybe Seaborn? Did you say Seaborn? Yeah, I already? said Seaborn. Maybe there are only four. But anyway, um, Bill Handel loved Crystal. He said that was the one to go on. Maybe Oceana. They have very good food. I don't know if they're five star in everything, but anyway. I'll have to ask um, the ask guy. Him. Well, ask him. Yeah. Say, my friend Leo, someday wants to go on a world cruise, but he wants to go on the best. Cruise line. He doesn't. He doesn't want to go. What is the name of that new boat? It's the world's largest boat. The uh, something of the seas. The, it's Royal Caribbean. Actually, they invited me it's on the RCI. Press yeah, two weeks ago. We were on the Anthem of the Seas in one of its early voyages. In fact, we had that family suite, the two-story family suite, but they didn't have the slide in there. <laughs> in the suite or on the ship? No, in the suite on this new Did one. They really? Yeah. 
They have so this family suite, which we we did get, which was great. There's two stories. Right. You have panoramic view. You're off the back of the boat. I loved that. It was crazy. I don't know why we did it, but we did. Um, but the new one has that same suite, but with a slide in it. <laughs> so you go down from the first story to the bottom. <laughs> That's insane. I, 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 oh, I, it's I, an insane I, ship I, all around. It's like 7,000 people. It's I huge. Get my kids on that. This yeah. is why, well, we, we went on it because we thought Michael would enjoy it more because there's bumper cars and all that stuff. But it was so big and it was so crowded that you couldn't get on anything. It was like going right. to Disneyland on exactly. a peak day, and I didn't yeah, enjoy yeah. it. I, yeah, I don't like that either. You have to line up early. Um, even even on, when they do media trips, you got to get there. You got to get in line. Yeah, no. before before everyone else. I mean, quantum half hour before it even opens. Quantum, quantum of, of the, the seas. seas. The yes. quantum. And uh, you know, I mean, it's great if you if you like crowds. If you like people, see, I don't like people. Right. That's my problem. Right. Well, so I want to. Like but so the world cruise I want to go on has three hundred people on the boat. You probably get to know them a little too well. Well, they just had a World Cruise on sale last week, and it sold out in minutes. That was, and it's that was Silver Sea. It sold out in, in just a few hours. I, I think it was $80,000 a person. Yeah, that was Silver Insane. Sea. Yeah. That's the one I think we're going to want to go on, but maybe Regent, and then Crystal I'll, I'll was in the out. running. I'll find out. You find out what's the best. <laughs> world Cruise. You want to do a World we might Cruise? Do, we might do, because Lisa's worried about her cats, and you know, these World Cruises are five months, four months. The one I wanted was six months, but... Because it's retirement. It's like when right. I when I, when I throw just live on it. No, I don't want to live. Just on live it. on it. But the, I'm thinking maybe I'll do one month chunks. Well, I, I've met people where they've lived on the cruise. It's cheaper. It's probably cheaper. Yeah. But 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 not on these luxury ships. No. You know what? If I were a widower, I might. But I no. Lisa and I are not going to live on a cruise ship. That that's crazy oh. talk. Oh. It's crazy talk. Well. <laughs> it's cr crazy talk with my wife too. Because I was like, that's what, that was no, my we plan. Have cats. I was like, no, yeah, well, maybe you, okay. You it's and not going to happen. It'll be you and me, baby. We'll <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. Johnny and Leo. We'll be like the skipper and yeah. Gilligan. Gilligan. <laughs> Who's Gilligan? <laughs> oh, boy. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> <Yeah>. Take care. <laughs> Which one's Gilligan? <laughs> Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys, 8888-ASK-LEO. The phone number. Back to the phones we go, and it's uh, Edgar. I almost said The Edge. I thought maybe we've got a celebrity. No, it's Edgar from San Bernardino, California. Hi, Edgar. Hi. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, I just had, well, an issue. Um, I'm a boomer, so I kind of like, I know there's Google Photos and the cloud to store photos, but uh, I usually stick with sending myself an email, a couple of pictures, um, I've been doing it for years since I've had Yahoo, like early 2000s. Yeah. But um, I was cleaning up my phone earlier this week, and um, I started sending myself pictures to my other Yahoo email. And um, when I logged, when I opened up the app um, to um, check my email and clear up my email or whatever, because I get a lot of spam because it was Yahoo, um, I found that I couldn't log in anymore. And um, I was still able to log into my other account, so I'm like, okay, it's fine. At least I still have this account with my pictures that I've been sending. But two days after that, um, same thing. Um, I got locked out, and I can't. Oh back boy! In. Um, I've tried searching, um, and I put my email, my username, email, or mobile phone number, and I get sorry, we don't, sorry, we don't recognize this email. And um, I figured, well, I'll give you a call because I was listening to you on KFI. Good. Um, How did you get your Yahoo mail? Did you get it direct from Yahoo or did you get it as a customer of Verizon or some phone company or something like that? It, it had to be through Yahoo because, like I mentioned, I got it like early 2000. That's like my first. Yeah. Year. OK. Like, so you're you're yeah, because they launched in right about then. So you've had it since they've been around pretty much. Um, they're not gone. That's the good news. But they have been sold about 83 times. In fact, yeah. if you go to mail.yahoo.com. It says, and this is not encouraging when I see this on an email site, Yahoo Mail is going places. Come with us. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> what? Where are you going? I don't want to go with you. Follow up with your feet up. Stay on top of it. So I don't, they got sold. They got sold again. Um, I think that's probably part of the problem. It is, you, you have had the free accounts all this time, right? Correct. And, um, yeah, the only thing I'm, the only solution I, not solution, but 
there's a uh, when I go to their help center, it says uh, sure talk to somebody, but for five dollars. Oh my god! Well, that and that, I have to say, when you get something for free. The very first thing that's out the window is tech support because that's expensive. You know, oh, every call is 20 okay. bucks or something. So that's why. Oh. Um, but so I think we should figure out what's going on. Now, there are a couple of things that come to mind. For one thing, Yahoo some years ago had a massive breach in which uh, passwords and logins were leaked out. It is possible when you log into the Yahoo Mail, uh, it said, what does it say? It says, I don't recognize you. Yes, it says I don't recognize the um, the name. Okay, I'll try it again. I had it right now, but I, I no, that's okay. Yeah, it doesn't recognize the name. You know, the good good practice. Although Yahoo probably is not the <laughs> paragon of good security practices, uh, but good practice would not be to say your name or password are wrong, or just would simply be I can't log you in. Uh, yeah, sorry, we don't recognize this email. Is the message I get in you know red red letters. Well, that's not good. You can get yeah. <laughs> that's that's really yeah. not good because that's your email address. And 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 have you tried the I forgot? You know, underneath it it says forgot my password. Yes, I did that, and it and it asked you um, forgot username, and, and it says oh you know put your phone number. So I put the phone number, and, and it doesn't know that either. And that was the phone number you used when you set up the account. Do you know? No, because eventually I changed. Eventually yeah. throughout the years I changed numbers, so I kept that up. And um, I did get the text message with the with the oh, random letters. Good. I punch those in. Yeah. So I punch those in, and I get it again. Sorry, we don't recognize this email. That's that sounds like their systems are messed up because they're actually sending you to the proper phone number, that code. Yeah, that confirms uh, they've got that information. They, that is correct. Uh, so, but then they don't. So. Mm, that is very frustrating because you yeah, obviously have everything stored in there. Yeah, and then I lost access to the second email, the other email that I was just sending myself, like stuff yeah. the backup. So then I lost access to that one earlier. Um, so a little tip next for next time. time, if you're going to back up, back up to a different company, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, I do have Google Photos and um, I do have... Oh, good. Phone. So you haven't lost anything. Well, I've just lost all the old stuff. Yeah. Like my daughter is uh, oh. 16 now. Yeah, you don't want to lose those baby like pictures. Kids. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like, uh Right. Oh, that's frustrating. I, think I, might, I might have to um, bite the bullet and pay them the $5, I'm thinking. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. One thing I would try, you're doing this on a phone right now, am I right? Yes, every, everything's on the phone. And yes. do, you have a, do you have a computer you can use? No, okay. actually, I don't. I did use a web browser. Does that help? Or well, you browser? might go to the library or, or, or go to a friend who has a, a PC, you know, a computer, uh -huh. and see if you can just log into yahoo.com. And see if they have any. It might be a different experience if you're doing it uh, on a computer versus on your phone. I wonder, you know, Yahoo did, and all of these guys do. If you have an inactive account, does deactivate them? In fact, they did. I remember when they did that, and I was thought, oh, I'm going to hear from people. But you, but your account was active. You were sending and receiving email on those accounts. Yeah, I was sending, receiving. Yeah, and then those two, those two emails, they were like my spam emails. Like you know, oh, put it in email for this or. For yeah, that. yeah, I always do that. Yep, yep. But yeah, but they were not inactive. Email. You had logged into both of them recently. Am I right? Con Constantly. Constantly. Because, like I said, I take I take a lot of pictures. Um, I take a lot of pictures, so I just this oh, this sounds like it. and and it might be related to the fact that Yahoo is you know changing companies and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I think maybe it's only five bucks. I yeah. don't have high hopes, <laughs> but at least there's somebody who could uh, you know look at their from their server point of view uh -huh. and say, hey, well, no, you're right. We don't you know maybe give you some idea of what happened. Right, because the only, uh, yeah, I couldn't, because like I said, I didn't know what was going on. And sometimes when I would go into my email and see like, hey, did the picture send in the outbox? It would just show, it would show draft, but you wouldn't see the draft. It would just have the number in parentheses. Like you have four drafts and it's just like, okay, well, where are they? Or there's a draft, the there's a drafts folder. Um, uh, Yahoo did discontinue at the end of last month, China. You, you don't have a. You weren't getting on from China, right? No, no. I was from uh, Pomona, I think. <laughs> and Yahoo, yeah, Pomona. That's not China, as far as I know. Uh, Yahoo Mail was down for a bit. I'm looking at down detector, and they were down for a bit. But this is this just happened again, so it's it's currently happening. Um, 
Boy, I, I think this has to do probably with Yahoo moving from one company to another. There's sometimes uh, disruptions. I hate to say spend the five bucks, but you've been getting this mail for free for almost 20 years. So yeah, maybe it's time just spend five bucks. And if they don't help you, they don't help you. But there's enough in there that you, yeah, you want those baby pictures. And then from then on, don't trust email to store that stuff. Uh, and if you right. if you're going to back it up, back it up to a different company. So if the co you know send it to your Gmail, so in case Yahoo goes belly up, I don't. I, I, Apple is fine as far as backups also. Yeah, Apple's fine too. Yeah, fine. But again, never put all your eggs in one basket. Is the is the yeah, is the backup? Exactly what I was doing, I was just spreading it all around. You know, good man. But you didn't spread it far enough. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank, you, thank you so much for your help. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah, Yahoo got bought by AT and T, and then I think AT and T is spinning them off, and oh, it's a mess. Verizon, per, wait a minute. Verizon purchased Yahoo. AT and T used Yahoo Mail. Oh, I can't even follow the. Yeah, the it's so freaking complicated. Wicked web. Um. <laughs> so. And then if Verizon, I don't know if they exactly spun it off, they um, got rid of it. <laughs> I don't even know who owns Yahoo these days. Apollo Global Management owns Yahoo. Apollo Global Management. And remember uh, Verizon briefly renamed it to Oath? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they said, that's a terrible name. Let's name it Yahoo again. I think this could be just part of... Of, of Apollo getting I Yahoo so and moving the servers over. Let's hope so. Leo Laporte, the tech guy with Micah Sargon. Well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers and the internet and home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, all the technology, everything with a chip in it. 8888 Ask Leo. We'll be talking a little bit about the uh, new Apple hardware, the Mac Studio and the Mac Studio display, both of us. Uh, proud owners. Well, you have one, I have the other. So I'm going to have to borrow your display to use my yes. Mac Studio. But that's okay. That's fair. Uh, 8888-ASK-LEO. The phone number uh, should be... I guess we didn't have room to put Ask Micah and Leo that's in all the right. phone number. Uh, that would make it a very long phone number. You could, if you want, though, dial 8888-ASK-LEO and Micah. It would still get here. Would it? Oh, well, yeah, it's just a lot of extra numbers. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of useless extra numbers, but you could. And uh, I guess that's what uh, Gary did from Camarillo, California. Hi, Gary. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. Let's talk to you. Welcome. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I just got a couple of quick, quick questions. I'm going to have to take my phone in. I have an iPhone 12 to get the battery replaced. Is really? There you do, like, delete the... Yes, um, delete uh, everything. Or, uh, so the thing, uh, I wish it were more widely known. I'm really glad you asked. My uh, my good friend, uh, Will, uh, dropped his laptop, fell off the counter. We sent it in uh, to Apple. They repaired it. They replaced the logic board. Hundreds of dollars later, came back. There was nothing on the drive. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you should know that Apple, as routine policy, when you send something in to fix it, wipes it. And I think they do that because they don't want liability for anything that might be on there. So I think before they even look at it, they just wipe off the drive, put a generic operating system on there. And that there's another reason to do that, because maybe the problems you're having with your phone were caused by apps. I mean, in your case, not. But... They want to make sure it's just this is the pure operating system. Now let's see how it works. And then there's not this issue of, oh, my God, look at these pictures. So uh, I think you should absolutely back it up before you send it. And frankly, uh, even though you know Apple will wipe it, just in case, I would wipe it because you got all, everything's on there. That's so, your life, right? Yeah. So if I, I, mean, I take the iPhone to the, to the store, I just didn't want them to spy on it or something. Exactly. Exactly. But it's also good to have a backup, you know, for a lot of reasons. So this is an occasion. Do you have a computer you can back it up to? Yeah, I have a computer, but I thought you could just do it on your phone. I mean, on the... You can, but that's not... Yeah, so you could back it up to iCloud if you've got enough storage in your iCloud. You can just make sure it's all backed up and then go to settings. Uh, in the general settings, there's reset phone and just erase all content and settings. And you should always do that before you send it into Apple. Absolutely. 
And then, then it would come back, all my apps and everything like I had it before. Yeah, if you if you back it up now to the iCloud, when you get the phone back, <laughs> it'll be just like when you yeah. got it in the first place. It'll say, oh, welcome, hello, uh, here's your new phone, what language do you want to speak, that kind of thing. And then it will say, do you want to set this up fresh or from an, an existing phone? And you say, okay. oh, I have a backup, uh, set it up from that. Uh, I have a quick question. I don't know if you can answer it or not. Uh, before they updated it as 15.4, yeah. I was able to dial a star 82 on my phone with a voice activated. I would just say, you know, hey, Siri, call. And it was star 82. And it did it. But uh, since it's this update, it will not call star 82 numbers. Oh, It'll that's interesting. Let me try it. I'm going to yeah. mute my mic for a second. Hey, Siri, call star 82. What what happens when you call Star Eighty Two? Uh, I mean, I put the number Star Eighty Two, so it'll be unlocked. I get my phone so number. So it says you need to continue in the app. Now let's try it again. Hey Siri, call Star Eighty Two. Just to confirm, you'd like to call Eighty Two? Yes. Calling Eighty Two. Well, it does it on my phone. <laughs> I'm on an iOS uh, fifteen point four. What am I going to get, by the way? <laughs> Should I hang up now? Uh, okay, so what it does is, is that, by putting star 82 before you're calling a phone the last, number, oh, before it, a phone it number. tells the system that you're okay with showing your caller ID information. Turn on caller ID. So you, this words. is if you have a number that normally doesn't yeah. give the caller ID information. Um, so you're, call, you're actually telling Siri, hey, Siri, call star 82 and then a phone number. Well, I, I, I put star 82 for the phone number, but I say, like, Call Leo and then the And it's in there. You know who, who and it's is. not dialing. Oh, I see. It's not dialing. Yeah, yeah. But if I I can physically touch it, it'll work. But it yeah. won't do voice activation. So, you know, a deal. couple of generations ago, I think it was with the original iOS 15. might have been with the 14. It was with the 14. They they mistakenly deleted a lot of capabilities. Siri used to be able to, uh, uh, you know, send emails, to do a lot of stuff. And they took it out, and then the blind community especially was very upset. Apple did put it back. They said, whoops, that was a mistake. It took them about six months, but they finally put back those capabilities. It may be that once again in this update, they have disabled the capability un unwittingly, unintentionally. Uh, and because it's kind of, it, you know, so you have it. It's in your contacts. You're not saying dial it. You're saying call Leo. And it's not yeah. dialing the Star 82 before you go? No. That's oh, interesting. I no. But yeah. I have most of my numbers are uh, caller ID blocked, but I have like a couple. With yeah, you want them to know you're calling. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, so, so I have to just physically touch the, uh, you know. That's contact. annoying, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Um, I'll Let's look. You know, you've got now the entire team working, <laughs> trying to find out what happened. It's one of those little corners. You know, anytime you. Uh, you do a big update to an operating system, and 15.4 is a big update. Uh, sometimes you break things. And uh, the things that get back, get by your testing, your quality testing, are things that are like that, not, you know, very commonly done. I completely understand, and I bet you there's thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, maybe millions, given how many iPhones there are, of people doing this. Uh, so they're going to hear about it. Uh, you'd probably be a good idea to report the bug to Apple, actually, because... Um, they would probably, if they get enough people saying, hey, something's wrong. Um, Mike is trying it right now. Are you trying it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Mike yeah is I'm trying it. I, I added star 82 to uh, your number, and now we're going to see. Okay. He's, he's, he's calling me, and we'll see. <laughs> yeah. we'll, well, the reason that we're doing this is it could be the carriers doing it as well, because that star 82 is a directive not to the phone but to the phone company. And so it could be the phone company is somehow not not getting that. There is a feedback assistant uh, on your uh, phone. Well, there may be. I have one on my phone probably because I use uh, beta packages. But you can also report bugs uh, directly to Apple. Um, uh, let's see. What would be the best way? How to report bugs to Apple so they get fixed. <laughs> use the feedback assistant, which uh, it has a website. You can go to feedbackassistant.apple.com. You'll have to sign in with your Apple account. But that's it's a good idea when you find a bug that's really like a... This is a serious bug to report it to Apple. Did it work? It, it appears... 
I muted? There we go. It appears to have worked. Uh, it just didn't show that it had star 82. And my phone didn't ring, but I think probably because I'm it went to blocking you because it's an unknown number. Yeah. Oh, that's the other thing. I don't have... Uh, yeah, you turned it on when default. you did it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So um, I'm, I'm, that's very interesting. Uh, I, we, we have not heard about this. Yeah, new to us. M Micah, apparently it did work. I got the call through and it appears to have added the star 82 prefix beforehand. The only thing was it didn't show that whenever oh, I was Oh, you know what? <laughs> I said I got a call from Micah Sargent. All right. So it, did so it did not block it, though. It didn't block it, no. Should if I do star eighty two and you're not using caller ID blocking? Maybe that's yeah. I'm maybe, not. Sure, I'm I don't not remember. Sure. Is it a toggle or is it turn it on? Um, so we sound like uh, <laughs> Abbott and Costello here. I understand. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this one's we, a tough one. Gary, we haven't uh, we haven't demonstrated. We'll keep playing with it. Uh, do you know okay. if you if you have a problem with your phone, the best thing to do is feedback.apple.com, just because that way they'll at least get that bug report. And perhaps it is a bug, in which case there's a chance they'll fix it. And if anybody knows, it seems like uh, it, it unblocks, you'd have to block yeah, first. Yeah, exactly. I'd have to turn that off first. <coughs> All right, we're going to take a break. Come back with more 8888-ASK-LEO. Abbott and Costello answering your uh, tech questions. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Who's in the first chair? What? <laughs> What's on the second? <laughs> Ah, yes, yeah, Star 69 calls back the last caller, even uh, if it's blocked. <clears throat> I know that because I just saw that happen in a movie. What was it? It was so funny. Lisa and I both said, don't do that. She's going to call. Oh, I know. It was in the Pam, Pam and Tommy uh, show. <laughs> call you. Okay. So I you just, blocked? I just turned off caller ID. Okay. I should, I should turn off start. do not disturb is what I should do here. Okay, focus is off. I must still be blocking you. Oh, you know, it does. I think it blocks unknown callers. Oh, that's right. It'll silence them. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to hang up and see if you get Let me see what I have in my recents. See if I have another. Yeah, unknown caller. Okay, so now I'm going to... Now do it. Star 67 into the... No, no, star 82. Oh, star 82, that's right. <clears throat> All right, so... So he, call, he actually... Here's how it works, Scooter X. In his contact list... He had a phone number that included star 82 saying like whenever I call this person I don't want I don't want to block my caller ID. And it's apparently not doing that anymore. So now you have put star 82 in my phone number. Call Leo's iPhone. And now let's see if that worked, I will see your name in my uh in my list. It should actually call, ring too, right? Mhm. Mm yeah, he did say that, but he it says your name. So that what does work? Okay, so we've verified it works. So why is it not working on his phone? We don't know. It's not really uh, a, it sounds like maybe his phone company is no longer honoring it or something like that. Or maybe it's actually happening, but uh, <clears throat> muted, but maybe it's actually oh. Maybe it's actually happening, but uh, just because it's no longer showing it in whenever he sees his dial, because on mine it just shows your. It doesn't contact. show Star Eighty Two. Yeah, it doesn't. But it show did that. unblock. But it did do it. Because <clears throat> I, you know, that's so I if it's that's really interesting. Of UI. That's a good tech. That's a good. Maybe that's it. So we'll talk about that when we come back. We'll we'll see if we can figure that out. So I had Micah Sergeant, unknown caller, and Micah Sergeant. That's really cool. Yeah, that is cool. It's good to know. And you're on which carrier? AT&T. Okay. So AT uh, Scooter X is saying that <laughs> some carriers don't have the option to toggle that on or off by <laughs> default. Uh, but Verizon does. And I on AT&T also have the option to turn off callers. And presumably uh, the callers, because it was working for him. So and unless he changed carrier, which mm -hmm. he probably didn't, he says it changed when he went to 15.4. Yeah. So presumably there's something with the callers. And this is the other thing, too, clarification on what he means when he says it's not working, because it may very well still be working. He's just not seeing it in his recents that it actually dialed that right. part of the number. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. The guys are back in town. Micah Sargent <laughs> and uh, Leo Laporte answering your call. So we, in the break, Micah, did a lot of legwork. So work. much work. So much, yeah, legwork, handwork. Our caller says that he... 
has caller uh, ID blocking turned on by default on his smartphone, <clears throat> on his iPhone. And what he'll do with callers that he wants to announce himself to, he'll add star 82 to the phone number in his contact list. <clears throat> and then he'll ask Siri to dial that number, say, you know, call Leo. And the star 82 will be dialed as part of my number. Right. He says with 15.4, it stopped doing that. So you're running <clears throat> an iPhone on AT&T with 15.4. You went through all the steps. You turned on caller ID blocking, called me. I saw unknown caller. Then you added star 82 to the entry in the contact list. I see your name. Yes. <clears throat> so it is working. Yes. You don't see star 82 in the number you're dialed. Correct. When I go into my phone app and I look at recents, it just shows your name. It, right. And even if I hit the I button to show information it for it. It doesn't show star 82. It does not have star 82. As so it may be that's just a UI change. It's, it stopped showing that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the only way to test it is to call somebody and say, do you know who this is? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Do you know who this is? Uh, but it did work with AT&T. That's the other thing. It, it's really a carrier feature. Yes. Yes. That's the important thing to <laughs> note is there are some different short codes and uh, sort of prefixes that you can dial that are talking to the phone system and <laughs> to your carrier as opposed to being something happening on your device yeah. itself. So the name may not be provided by the carrier, by the way. Caller ID, the way it works, it gives you, in general, it gives you the phone number, but not the name. Your phone then looks up the name in your contact list. So if you're calling somebody who has your name and number in their contact list, mm -hmm. your phone will say your name. Otherwise, it just says the number. Correct. And in, in some cases, some phone companies do have an additional service where they'll put the name in there if they can get it, but... Uh, that varies by carrier. So I don't think it's broken. It doesn't appear to be broken. Not in uh, Just, iOS 15. Uh, not 4. as obvious uh, that it is doing what you're asking it okay. to do. Good. Um, and I don't know if that helps our caller at all, but uh, at least we, were, we weren't able to reproduce it. And that's, by the way, it, when you go to feedback.apple.com and you're giving them a bug report... One of the key features they want is, is it reproducible? Does it happen every time? Because mm -hmm. if they can't do it, if they can't demonstrate it, they're not going to take it. They're just going to say. They won't be able to fix it if case they closed. Fix themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Don's on the line from Anchorage, Alaska. Hi, Don. Don Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. Hi, it's Don. I uh, talked with you quite a long time ago. I bought a HP Windows 7 computer, and I succumbed to the offer to get the 10 upgrade. Good. What a dumb mistake that was. Oh, you hate it. I hate it terribly, but I ended up having to get, replace the computer you know, with an NV that I bought just about a year ago. Okay. And got the terabyte uh, solid-state drive. I'm a dinosaur computer guy. Um, I started my life out on an IBM 360 programming. In wow. Trend. Hey, all right. <laughs> yeah. So, One of the heroes of the revolution. Right. And I, I went kicking and screaming into the Windows world back in the uh, 80s. But. <laughs> and you're st apparently still kicking and screaming. <laughs> Here's the problem with uh, Windows 7 is it's not supported anymore for security. So uh, well, that's why I, had, I, I put the computer into mothballs, hoping that someday I can find some wizard that can change up the guts. Cause I love the keyboard on that computer. Yeah. But, um, and, but I'm, I'm, Well, you know, you might look at, since you like the old days, you might look at Linux which is a Unix operating system, you could put that on there, and that would be secure and up-to-date. It just wouldn't be Windows. Well, that's a, that's a suggestion that I will definitely take to heart. Yeah. So anybody anybody who's programmed in Fortran on an IBM 360 will will feel a little bit more at home, I think. You can even you don't even have to have a graphical user interface if you want to just be command line. If I don't think they do punch cards still, although you never know with Linux. There probably is a punch card reader and writer somewhere. I don't miss the days of carrying the suitcase around with all the punch cards. <laughs> I bet not. Uh, I bet not. So what, what was your question? Because I interrupted. Uh... No, that's fine. I, I got this uh, really nice PNB, um, and uh, it's the large format, the 17-inch screen. And um, and one of the reasons I bought this particular one, because it still has a, a, um, a CD uh, drive in it, and um, I had an older version of... Um, Microsoft Office, a 2003 edition, and I loaded it on the computer. It was working fine. I love to do spreadsheets with Excel. And um, after I loaded my 2003 version, I noticed a little thing that pops up on boot up called device detector, and it does no longer auto detect. And I was wondering if you've ever heard of that before. 
device detector. Yeah, I mean, I get that from time to time with my office installation. It'll, it, I think what is, my guess is, it doesn't say device detector, but it's something like I'm examining your machine. And when I, in my opinion, what it's doing is checking to see if I'm licensed to use these, you know, Microsoft and copy protection. So, I would guess that's the same thing. It's looking to see if you have a license uh, for that Envy. Did you, when you, when you uh, installed uh, Office on the Envy, do you install it directly there? I did, and you, it ran fine until, yeah. until I succumbed to the invitation to do the, quote, 10-day free trial of Windows 11, which I did a few months ago. <laughs> and eight days into that trial, I decided I hated Windows 11. So <laughs> you have not learned a thing, have you? <laughs> I guess not. So now I'm stuck with this device detector that comes up at boot up and, and never goes away. I, and I lost my Microsoft Office, and I tried to reload it, and it reloaded, but it's a read-only version now. And um, so I, I don't know. I tried to undo the uh, Windows 11 update, and I went in. I looked. There's about a half a dozen different uh, ways to do that. It looked like some of them actually charge, and I, I dug around until I found one that looks like it might be from Microsoft. So I did the Windows 11 undo, which lasted fine until I shut the computer down that night. And <laughs> So I said, sure. And guess what? It updated with Windows 11 back on there. Ah. <clears throat> okay, a couple of things. I'm going to first of all tell you about my friend Steve Gibson, who is much like you, an old timer. He stayed, still writes an assembly code. And he hates that pop-up saying, would you like to install Windows 11? So he's written a small, free assembly language. Actually, I think it's just a registry uh, modif modification uh, program. It's called In Control. If you go to grc.com or you Google grc.com and in control, you can download this and it will stop the nag. It will it will just turn off that whole Windows 11 nagging. Nice. So I would recommend that to start. You might, I mean, worst case scenario, you might want to download Windows 10 and reinstall, you know. Uh, which you can do, and just you know, start from scratch, install Office on top of it. Everything will be back to normal. It sounds like you you kind of gotten this version, you know, purgatory, and you're going back and forth. So try and try and control at least to start. See if that helps. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Sorry, we ran out of time, but I'm still we're still here, Don. So something else came up, Leo, and I'm 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 convinced that these uh, <clears throat> modern that, um, and my wife doesn't believe me, but my I, my iPhone was sitting on the counter a few days ago. I was in the kitchen preparing a meal, and all of a sudden my phone called her, <laughs> and she and I I saw the screen light up, and I picked up the phone, and she's on the phone. She says, "Why did you call me?" And I said, well, the phone called you, and she. Oh, she said that's impossible. That didn't happen. Well, no, I think it is possible. I think it's Siri, right? Yep. So, <clears throat> if you said your wife's name and something like seriously, Lisa, oh. I've, I've had this happen. Seriously is one of the words that will trigger mm -hmm. Siri, and uh, I've had it happen. In fact, all the time we'll be watching TV. It happened last night, and I hear, Bloop. I don't know what you're talking about. Bloop. I can find this on the web, though. I mean, it's like, I'm not talking to you. Stop listening. So your phone has Siri on it. <clears throat> it is listening always. And uh, I, my guess is that it, it, maybe you mentioned your wife's name. Uh, and I done that. That's a good point. Yeah. Inadvertently triggered Siri to dial the number. <clears throat> I don't think there's any feature in there that would dial your wife, except there is one feature if you have an Apple Watch. Uh, and I guess the phone has this feature too, where you can call if she's in your, if she's your emergency contact. If it thinks you fell or got in an accident, it can call your emergency contact. Yeah, but it would also dial emergency <laughs> services at the same time, so yeah. you would have known when the yeah. fire department showed up. You can, if you don't want no. this to happen, turn off. You know, listen for Hey Siri. Then you can still trigger it, but you have to press the screen on off button and hold it to talk to her, the lady, the little lady. I'd be happy to do it. So I'm, I'm after I got rid of the Windows 11 and did the automatic update after I shut it down that time, and Windows 11 came back, something else happened. I got a new user added to my oh, startup, and the new user's name is Tobias. What? And I, Excuse I, me? I, I ignored, <laughs> I ignored Tobias. 
and I ignored Tobias and I ignored Tobias until finally one day out of curiosity. Uh, well, I'll go take a look at Tobias. I figured, well, it's going to be password protected anyway, so there's no way I can do any harm. And I opened up Tobias, and it says, give me your password. So out of grins, I put in my personal password, and it accepted it, and it opened up the desktop. And now I've got this fabulous screen that I've never seen before that I didn't create, and it and I'm, I'm getting really, really scared because I'm thinking I may have fried my brand-new computer. No. So I went, What's the screen say? I, Nothing. It was just, it was looking really pretty and it was looking really handy. But I'm thinking, oh wait a minute, I'm I'm into I'm into a user that I never created. And I'm there. there is a guy who works at Microsoft Research named Tobias Schnabel. Maybe no, no, I don't. You don't. Your name, your middle name. You have no Tobiases in your life. I did back when I was a very young guy in my 30s, and I won't tell you how old I am now. You've already figured it out because I was an IBM 360 guy. But um, when I was a very young guy in my 30s, I had a Dalmatian hound that I named <laughs> Tobias. Oh, this is too weird. Now, you're just teasing me now, aren't you? Or do you live in a, a haunted cabin in Anchorage? <laughs> well, it's not a haunted cabin, but it is the best B&B South Anchorage. Business. Oh, nice. Uh, you run a and b yeah. up there? Only for people I know. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to get to know you and Tobias <laughs> better. Uh, that is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. There is no reason. Now I would wipe your computer, uh -huh. honestly. I think uh, you get a USB uh, drive. Uh, I think it needs to be 16 gigabytes. You can download a, a fresh copy of Windows 10. Because your computer has already been running Windows 10, it won't ask for a serial number or anything. Make sure you back up your data, obviously. But I would ri I would wipe the whole thing and start over because that's not right. That's There's something wrong going on there. I think that may be the best advice I've gotten so far because I did get hacked a while back uh, on a scam. They tried to take ten dollars out of me. So that I may have been to bias. <laughs> <laughs> I I have to run, but I would. I think this absolutely calls for wiping it and uh, starting over. And it's an actually easy thing to do. Uh, they make it pretty easy. <clears throat> Thanks for the call, Tobias. It's so strange. <laughs> he had a dog named Tobias. That's, that's what's wild. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy, tech guy too. Micah Sargent with us. Got a couple more calls before we get uh, out of here. Of course, Dickie Bartolo's coming up. Our gizmo wizard with some junky gadget nobody's going to want to buy. But, you know, we, we, we humor him. We humor him. <laughs> yeah, and you buy a lot of I buy gadgets. almost everything. Yeah. I'm just mad. That's all. <laughs> I have all sorts of junk <laughs> that I bought because of Dickie D. Coming up, Donald, another Don on the line from Lexington, Kentucky. Hi, Donald. Hello. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. Welcome. Um, I got a question. I, I've got a million, well, not a million, but thousands of photos on my computer. And some of them are duplicates, triplicates, quadruples. <laughs> and I was wondering if some program that can sort all those help me delete the, the extras. Yeah, Windows or Mac? Uh, Windows. Okay. Uh, for Mac, I recommend uh, Gemini 2, which is a really good tool that will do this. I don't know if there's a Gemini for uh, Windows. I don't think there is. But what you want in a... D I'm going to let Micah find one. You're good at that. Uh, but what you want in a Windows deduper is, in this case, something pretty smart because your photos, you can't just go by the name or the creation date. You really need to look at the photo and see if it's an exact duplicate. Uh, Correct. A lot of times with photos, the yeah, they get renamed or you edit it or whatever. So, so you don't you want to err on the side of, of uh, not deleting anything that you don't have a real copy of. And the best way to do that, and the best dedupes will do this, is they actually do something called a hash or a CRC on the file where they create a, a unique number that represents the contents of the file. Might even include the name and the creation date, but enough data so that it's unique. And then they compare the two. And only if those two numbers, those two hashes or CRCs match, do they then say, ah, yes, this really is truly a duplicate. Um, have you found something? Uh I, the first one that I came across is called Dupe Guru, and it is a <laughs> it's an open source application. Well, that's a good sign because a lot of these they'll you you say oh they're free you download it you run it and said hey I found a three thousand duplicates that'll be ninety nine ninety nine if you want to delete them and but this won't because it's open source Dupe Guru 
Steve, our San Diego Steve says uh, in our chat room, duplicate file detective. But again, you're going to you're going to be looking for something that is smart enough. You know, the last thing that you want to do is delete something that's, uh, you know, the only copy of a photo, I presume. Yes. Right. Right. And, and I don't you know, uh, it doesn't have to be free. I think uh, it, yeah, but, it takes to get it done. <laughs> yeah. So I also have found uh, an article. Uh, recent article, 16 best free duplicate file finders and removers uh, for Windows. And one it recommends specifically for photos is called Quick Photo Finder. Quick Photo Finder. It is also uh, free. And it does that exact thing I talked about where it's looking at the contents of the file to make sure that it's not deleting a you know, a single copy of that. Mm -hmm. So this sounds like... This uh, one seems the most friendly, too. Yeah, it's got a nice interface. <clears throat> what it, one of the things it does is it will, sh if you want, it can show you both photos before it deletes one of them and says, you know... Yeah. Money. Drag and drop. You drag the folder on there. Uh, this is such a common problem. We all have this problem. I have millions of duplicate photos. So uh, there are quite a few. I'll tell you what, we'll put... <laughs> We'll put a quick photo finder is quickphotofinder.com. We'll put a link to some of the other ones, the dupe guru as well at techguylabs.com. Uh, but there's two Thank good you. free choices. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. 30 bucks would be fine. But what some of these guys do is a little scammy where they, they don't quite tell you that it's going to cost you a lot of money <clears throat> once you right. do this. So, uh, I, I think there's a couple that are very good. Here's another one called Visipix, V I S I P I C S. That's specifically for duplicates, free to use. So I'm I'm also going to put this article in here because there's quite a few choices. That's uh, good. I just I worry about getting uh, a wrong type of program. It'd be a, a malware or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't blame. Very smart. Always be careful. I'm thinking Quick Photo Finder is the one to go with. At least start with that one. I will give that a try. Thank hey, you. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for calling, Donald. Have a good day. One more. Let's see before Dickie D. <clears throat> Let's go to Redondo Beach. Bill on the line. Hi, Bill. Hi, Leo. Nice talking to you. Been a fan for a while. Thank you, sir. Thanks for calling. Uh, okay, I have a uh, a Windows 10 laptop that uh, keeps going in and out of a real slow mode. When I when I go into, for example, I, I'm I subscribe to the LA Times and I bring it up. Uh, you scrolling through the pages, it goes real slow. But when I'm in a PDF inside, you know, that is not, not on the Internet, that is in, it, it, it scrolls at, you know, normal rate, fast. I have real fast Internet. I have a one gigabyte, and I have uh, an extender uh, near my room. I'm just wondering if you, if you have any hints or any idea of what it might be causing, might be causing this. You know, we, we usually think of web pages as being <clears throat> kind of lightweight, don't take up a lot of CPU, but they actually can be very hard to display, especially with images. Does it, is a PDF have a lot of images, or is it just text? Well, you know, you know, when you go, do you subscribe to any any? Newspaper? Yeah, and you download the newspaper as a PDF, and so you're saying when you download the newspaper as a PDF, it's fine. Well, no. When I when I'm looking at the at the uh, newspaper, I click on the you know the, it comes in the mail. I click on it. It opens up the paper. I guess he downloads it. Yeah, yeah. He downloaded. Yeah. It or, or, or okay. So it could be I'm it sure. could be it could be your internet. Although it sounds like it's fast. And is it anything else that it seems slow on, or just when you're web browsing? When I when whenever I'm doing anything on the web, you know, I I, yeah. I do. I do um, I do music things on the web and I go to this website where what know, what they, browser uh, what browser are you using? Uh, you know I'm I'm using Chrome. I also have okay. Edge in Edge in there. So there's a couple of things I would try. It may be that your internet you, you have fast internet, but it may be that in a particular place you're sitting is not very fast. Go closer to the Wi-Fi router and just see if it's faster. <coughs> but if it's not, okay. <laughs> I shouldn't recommend this, but I'm going <laughs> to put an ad blocker on there, <clears throat> uh, especially newspaper sites. They are loaded with ads, and the ads are all coming from different servers. 
And sometimes the okay. newspaper page won't load until the ad loads. So you're sitting there waiting. They call it first draw. The first draw of the web page <clears throat> should happen within just a couple of seconds. Uh, and then and then it, it can load the ads later, but it sometimes it's not well designed. So uh, a couple of things you could try. W one thing you might try is uh, there's a standalone Windows app for the LA Times. See if it works in the standalone app better. That's still coming from the web, but it's not using your browser. But the other thing is you might want to try a ad blocker. <clears throat> My suggestion is don't use it on sites you want to help support because you're you're basically taking away their revenue. But the one to put on Chrome or Firefox is called uBlock Origin. Not uBlock, uBlock Origin. Origin's really important. There are copycats. <clears throat> it's a Chrome extension. Uh, it's two words. It's from a guy called Gore Hill. So you'll if you see who the, who wrote it, G O R H I L L. It's an ad blocker. Okay. If it speeds things up, then it is that you know just these ads are slow. Sometimes the server they're getting them from are slow. That can really speed things up. It also makes these pages go from a hundred megabytes worth of crap to four megabytes of the stuff you want to read. But just remember when you're using it, you're 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 not you're not financially supporting. Now you pay for the LA Times, right? You're subscribing, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's okay to use uBlock Origin on the LA Times. So see, because that turns off a lot of stuff that can really slow a page down. If it's not your internet, if uBlock Origin helps, that's what was going on. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Okay, all right. <clears throat> hey, thank you. I appreciate it. I, 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 you know, look, we're about to run a bunch of ads. I hate to say <laughs> block ads because that's everything I do is ad supported. But sometimes these pages yeah. deserve it because they're so bogged down. You do pay for the L.A. Times. So uh, I, f I feel like ethically it's fine to run an ad blocker on the L.A. Times and see if that helps. You know, I, I, I thought that, you know, you could go with the settings somewhere that would block ads. Uh, <coughs> no, that Chrome. no Chrome doesn't want to because okay. Google makes its money on ads. Okay. <laughs> so Chrome will never block ads. <laughs> okay. So but but uBlock is really really good. uBlock Origin uh, has a ton of settings. Ignore those. Just use it as it comes out of the box. It's free. There's no charge. Gore Hill just hates ads. Okay. Okay. Because you, you know I have I have a, a a Samsung tablet and no problem with that. Oh, that's a good sign. The, uh, that means it's not your web, place. right? Yeah, right, 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 right. And the speed of when I do a speed test on my iPhone <laughs> is like at least a hundred, a uh, hundred m. Oh yeah, so it shouldn't. Yeah, you it know? should be running fine. Yeah, you have plenty of speed. Okay, okay. So do take a look at the Windows app. Uh, uh, you just that might be a way of seeing if it's your, your browser that's the problem. Okay, okay. So okay, all right. Well, I'll I'll do that because I'm. Um, you know, I just switched to the one gig of my system because I, I had the 400, and I thought, well, maybe this is it, and it's not that. It wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> well, it's a gigabit at the router. It, it, you said you have some extenders. They're they're cutting it in half. So okay. get, that's why I'm saying get next to the router and see how it works. Yeah, I some I, I even connected an Ethernet in the router, and when it, when I get oh. when I do that, no problem. You know, oh, oh, hold on. When you connect it to Ethernet, it's fine? Yeah. Oh, then it is then it is definitely the extenders. So here's the problem with extenders. They mm -hmm. cut in half your bandwidth. And the farther you get, the worse it's going to get. If you really want to fix that, get a mesh router system like Eero. That, that's what I got. That's what I got. Oh, that's not an extender. That's an Eero. All right. <laughs> yeah. So that's really, but that's a big deal. If the Ethernet's fast enough, then it is the Wi-Fi. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Huh. So then, so it's just you've got a bad con bad connectivity where you are, or you know where you're sitting. Uh, you said it's pretty distant from the router. Do you have a Eero beacon near you? 
Uh, I have a, a, a what they, an extender. I think it's a beacon. I, I think it is. If a it comes from Eero, it's a beacon. I was just thinking Windows does have a setting in your networking that it's a toggle uh, between a metered connection and a non metered connection. You may check to see if that got toggled on for whenever you're using your Wi Fi network versus when you're plugged in with Ethernet. Because I had that turned on on my um, window, oh, really? my, my laptop. And that slows yeah. it down. And it slows it down. Yeah. Because oh. it treats it almost like you're connected to a, a cell phone or something. Yeah, like because that. it assumes you're paying by the bit. And exactly. They don't, they don't so, wanna... so where is that in the network setting? Uh, we'll include a link in the show notes at uh, techguylabs.com. Yeah, but it's in the network the, settings. Yeah, it's yeah, the exactly panel. in the network settings. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate it because um, I don't want to throw this out the window. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so uh, I'm t I bet you're tempted. No, if you got the Eero and you have a gigabit uh, Wi-Fi, you should be just fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm but the fact that it's fine when you can. I wish you told me that up front because then we know it's not it's not the ads or anything because it works fine when you're wired. It's the, so now we know it's your Wi-Fi. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Let me let me try that in the, in the show notes. Right. Take that light. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, and by the way, I used to do your job, you know, as a tech support for Xerox, and they used to have printers, you know. Oh, God, you hated those calls, didn't you? Um, <laughs> Got to run, Bill. <laughs> Love to hear percussion. Love to hear Dick DiBartolo, Mad's Maddest Writer, wearing his Ukraine Hawaiian shirt. It's in blue and gold. Very nice. Is that why you're wearing that? Uh, I'm wearing it because it's 72 degrees in New York City. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's 59 in Northern California. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, that's great. Spring has sprung in Manhattan. Uh, it has. Now, it do has. you look for the uh, Robin Redbreast? Because when I was a kid in New England. You know what? I already, <clears throat> last year, I, I posted the 82nd uh, Robin of summer and said, <laughs> you're pretty late. But this time in February, a Robin flew into the backyard and I said, stay there. I, I'll get you bread and my camera. <laughs> he stayed. Oh, uh, so That's awesome. So, yeah, so no. it's spring in uh, Disneyland. Dick, Absolutely. Dick is, Absolutely. of course, world famous as Mad Magazine's maddest writer for more than five decades. But in all of that time, what very few people know, he collected gizmos, gadgets, oddball gimcracks, and G jaws, and he <laughs> he has them all ready at hand to share with us right now. He is our Gizwiz. Okay, you're not gonna run. Out, you're not gonna run out and buy this. Oh come on! All right. Well, you might. You know what? Don't, when COVID don't put it past sort of goes me. away, what when COVID goes away, yeah. and you start having parties again, yeah. maybe. All maybe. right. Okay. So, about a year ago, uh, we talked about the Carrick Drink Master. Yes. Which was like a Carrick machine that would make alcohol. Instead of coffee, drinks. it made. Yes. Beverages, adult beverages. Yeah, yes. Yes. So for some reason, just when two companies jump into this, Kerrig in December announces they're shutting down the system and you can get your money back. Really? On, Why did you? Uh, yes. Wait a minute. Like, was this a subscription? No, no. Uh, but they figured people Oh, they're were not going to make the pods. Yeah, are not going to make the pods they're not or the make machines. Vodka pods anymore. So. What would you, would you buy a margarita pod? What would... Well, yeah, well, you know what? The pods, I, I think Kerrig was making their own. But now Black and Decker, no, I'm sorry, Black Plus Decker <laughs> has, has announced the Bev, okay? So the Bev is an automatic drink maker that uses the Barisian pods, but it's at a lower price point. Now, this is... I, well, wait I, a minute. No, so these pods are not going to be uh, discontinued. No. They're no. like K-cups for booze. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. As a matter of fact, this unit is not even on the market yet. It's coming out in June. The pods are called Bartesian. Uh, because it's like exactly. your bar and it's artis artisan. Yeah. Yeah. And Bartesian actually makes their own drink maker. Oh. That I, I think is like 450 bucks or something. You know, how hard but, is it just to pour some booze into a glass? Come on. You know what? I think it's for the mixed drinks where yeah, it, yeah. it needs, 
you know, a little bit of lime, a little bit of something else, a tiny bit of this, all of that would be in the capsule. If you don't have a bitters but, collection, yeah, then this I, Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. But Leo, you know me and, and lights. This one has party mode. What? what? The, you mean the black plus decker with party mode? With party mode. So <laughs> the way it works is as you're making a drink, yes. each bottle lights up. Yes. As the liquor for the drink is needed. But mm -hmm. if you just want it around and you're not mixing drinks, oh, you can look. put it in party mode and the bottles will rotate. Oh, so and you do blink. attach full size alcohol bottles Th to that, it. Leo, that, that's what's different about this. And I think this is a better idea. Uh, so this is like a drink other, robot. The almost. pods just have the oh, oh, extra oh, stuff you add. They got add. the bitters or the yeah. lime. Or yes, whatever. exactly, yeah, exactly. Now, if you want uniformity, you buy your own uniform bottles and transfer the liquid. They're the very booze. pretty. It's actually quite pretty. From, it looks like my soda yeah, stream. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you want to use it directly out of the bottle, you just lower the straw into the actual bottle. So you can start with a mocktail which will not add any alcohol at all. And then you can do mild, strong, or let me fall over in the next five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I don't think they call it that on this the machine. Was, this probably... seems to me like it's a very bad idea. <laughs> I don't do? know. Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't know. It seems like it encourages consumption. You know Maybe. I mean, what is yeah. an alcohol company to do but encourage I guess consumption? it's their job. Well, Black, <laughs> Black Plus Decker. Oh, Black Plus Decker, yeah. They should know, be encouraging they, vacuuming. They should, I don't know. Dustbusters, yeah. you know? I mean, uh, yeah. okay. Interesting. Yeah. It, it, it'll say, uh, don't drink and use your bus duster. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, it's, I think you were right when you said Leo's not going to buy that because I'm not a big drinker. I'm not. And no, if, you, if you're a really a real party person, and also if you're a show off. I this like is, this is yes. You know what? I, when I show off, I show off by doing tricks with the martini shaker uh -huh. and the bottles, and I throw them in the air. I'm the attraction, not some machine. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And I was there when you did that lemon <clears throat> and that lime thing. And with did a your knife hands have a heel? <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna just have to get a better uh, uh, knife. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I, I said, what drink calls for a, a pint of blood? Because <laughs> stop it. That's a bloody Mary, as everyone knows. <laughs> oh, that's very good. A bloody Leo. Oh Great. no, no, no. Kids, kids, don't drink. It's a bad idea. It's a bad habit. But if you're already a drunk, Black and Decker, <laughs> the Bartesian. Bev. Oh no, it's not the Bartesian. No, that's no, another. Nothing to do with. Yeah. No. And, uh, the, and definitely not the drink works from Keurig. That's right. No, yeah. 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 I wonder why they stopped. Do you think it was just not a good it's market? It's kind of, you know what, uh, I, I thought it was kind of strange because uh, Black Plus Deca is just getting into that business. I know. So I'm, yeah. not sure, yeah. I'm not sure why. If you want to uh, get a link to this and more information, a video from, no, you didn't do a video for, oh, did you, no. You I, did, I did not because uh, it doesn't exist for me yet. Oh, yeah, you could. I mean, I'm not going to get one anyway. If they no. said you want one, I'm going to say. How much is no, it? Can you, uh, $299. Yeah, no. no. Uh, although it's cheaper than getting a bartender for the night, I guess. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Go to gizwiz.biz. That's his uh, website, G I Z W I Z dot B I Z. While you're there, if, if you want to see the bartender thing, go uh, to click the button that says the Gizwiz visits the tech guy. But there's lots of other wonderful stuff. It's a wonderful, amazing place to go, <laughs> including uh, the things Dick shows on World News Now. You should bring this to World News Now. That'd be kind of interesting on ABC. Yeah. Uh, the What the Heck Is It contest, which, uh, you know, is relatively new. It's the Staples one. Oh, oh I shouldn't have said that. Ooh. Oh, I gave it away. No, it's not that. But if if you uh, can identify it, you could be in running, running for a autographed copy of Mad Magazine. Actually, you don't even have to know what it is. If you get it wrong, but you're funny, you make Dick laugh, then you get an autographed copy too. So Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what the heck is it? At gizwiz.biz. Don't forget, Dick has a great podcast every week with Chad Johnson, gizwiz.tv. Thank you, Dickie D. Thank you, buddy. See have you a, next week. Have a great day. Thank you, too, to Micah Sargent. Very welcome. Tech Guy 2, every Saturday, doing the thing. Uh, he also uh, will be putting all those links up at techguylabs.com, audio and video from the show after the fact as well. 
Uh, thanks to Professor Laura, our musical director. Some great choices there. Thanks uh, to Kim Schaffer, our phone angel. Most of all, thanks to you, because without you, there would be no Tech Guy or Tech Guy 2. We'll be back next time. I hope you will, too, to talk about tech, to ask your questions, make some suggestions. And actually, uh, if, you, uh, if you have any suggestions for any of our callers today who maybe we didn't help, you could uh, call next time. Thank you very much. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. <clears throat> As always, have a great Geek Week. Take care. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week at Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.